you are the prime example of if he wanted to, he would. Because and I you did. did. But I don't really know if she wanted to <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning. <laughs> I don't even know that it's that interesting. Matt, stop. Okay, 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 okay. He was just talking about a sex tape and we got through all the good stuff and now the podcast is like late to the oh game. Oh my God, we're catching up. Okay, well, I feel like we just go now because we've already, we're already going. Okay, let's go with what okay. we're going about now. I'm at, first I asked you if you ever went to high school because I wasn't sure okay. if you were one of the YouTubers that dropped out of high school, never went, but you, you did go to high school. You Matt's just, been talking to her for about 30 minutes now and the first question he asked is, did you go to, did high, you go to high school? school? And I was like, what do you mean? Jack? Okay, also, hello, Matt King is here. Hey, happy to be here. <laughs> Supermodel extraordinaire Matt King Please, is here. I was, I was nervous like how you were going to introduce me because you know when you have guests, right. you yeah, have to kind of go, know. here I am with this YouTuber, internet personality, entrepreneur, producer. But we're going I was going to say um, debate team champion. A uh, speech team. Speech. speech team. Oh, I never shit. did debate, oh, but and I always- prepared speech. <laughs> prepared. Because oh. there's different varieties. Oh. Yes. Did you do it? No, I just listened to, I, I did my research. Okay, good, good, yeah, good, no, no, good, no, no, good, no. Good. I did my research as well. And national champion. National champion national in high champion. school. Yes, and then became a supermodel. Yeah, and then became a supermodel. For our audio <laughs> listeners. Yeah, I haven't been booked in a while lately, <laughs> oh, but okay. I'm just looking for, you know, the next, the next big break, yeah, yeah, you know, the next big break. I, I, have my, I have my limits. <laughs> so we have your father to thank for this. Yes, truly. And Lauren. that's where I get all my good looks from. No, I was saying th there are this podcast. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, my dad is handsome and I am also <laughs> but handsome. I'm sure he's a handsome man. <laughs> I'm just trying to yes and like, here. So if we want to roll with that, let's yeah. do it. Yeah. And then what happened, uh, Lauren? So Matt and I were trying to figure out where we met. And so there's one specific interaction that I vividly remember is when you approached me and said that your dad had listened to this article that I had done with NPR on mental health. And it, it was, <laughs> we're trying to piece it together. <laughs> right, and, and then you totally jogged my memory with that because as I was driving over here, I was thinking, how, how yeah, did how I meet we, Lauren? Because we we've each... known each other for a while. Yeah, We don't really hang out. No. <laughs> Just one of those kind of internet relationships, yeah, creators yeah. supporting creators. Yes. Um, but yes, my dad, um, this was like back in the Vine days when I was first, you know, starting out as being a creator and you know, your parents want to support you and try to interact and mm -hmm. encourage. Yeah. <laughs> and my dad is an avid NPR listener and listened to you talk about about mental health and anxiety. And he reached out and asked, do you know Lauren DIY? And I don't know if I said yes or no, but when we first met, that was my icebreaker. Yeah. So shout out to my dad and for doing yeah, that. Thanks, Mr. What's King. His, what's his name? Uh, Jim. Jim King. Jim. Jim King. Jim. Jim James King. King. Jim King. Wow. wow. Yeah. Must be That's nice. Got BD. What, what are your parents' names? Donna. Uh, Donna and what? Are they still together? Or I don't well, know. Donna and adopted. Yeah, Donna oh. and adopted. <laughs> so it sounds like the name of a TLC reality show, like Donna, Donna and adopted. adopted. Yeah. Do you guys want to put That's that together? That's great. Oh, Donna would be a hit on reality TV. I think. Macy Lau, I'm calling you next. Yeah, Donna That's would be fantastic. a hit. Because I have like a, this like interesting theory about parents' names. What are your parents' names? Gail and Greg. Oh, okay. Does, so it, not, does it not go? No, because okay. I always like parents whose names are like one syllable and two syllables, like Jim oh, and Cindy. Okay. okay. Like Mary and P. Yeah, like they kind of have like well, a nice fuck. ring. I, he I hear that more often than I do. Like a one and one syllable. syllable. But yours have like a nice alliteration to oh, it. Oh, and though. they get to share an email address, G Riamaki, because <laughs> <laughs> they're both a G. Oh, I it was like G G or like G two G. Like, I don't know. Like, Can you imagine if we had to share an email literally, address? I said that out loud, and the moment that I said it, I was like, "How unrealistic!" <laughs> I mean, I there would this late relationship would last seven minutes, not because we wouldn't like what we found, it just be like what. I have a, there's a Clear system in your place. Shit. There's a system in place. I want priorities and I want different folders for accounts and you're screwing everything up. You know, a lot of couples now sh like share Facebook accounts because oh. Facebook is one of the biggest reasons for divorce lately. Okay. Like oh. I'm pretty sure because, you know, they have their own private account. They connect yeah. with all their high school yeah, flings high school and stuff. Flings. There's a lack of trust. Uh -huh. So then couples make, you know, their joint Facebook account. But for me, I think that screams more insecurity in the relationship where one of them, they can't trust their own Facebook right. account. So that yeah. makes me more curious, but I always like cringe and I'm very curious when- Oh my God. Oh, that's so odd. Yeah, yeah. that makes you like, uh. <laughs> I, The last people that I want to connect with are my high school flings. Really? I, I, I actually would have a lot of questions for your high school things. I think we should start yeah, a joint no, Facebook No, page. totally, yeah, yeah I, I see that. <laughs> yeah. You'd be like, who is this? Who is this? Yes. Interesting. She's pretty. How long did you date her for? Oh yeah, that's the worst. <laughs> oh That's yeah. the worst. It is. <laughs> mm, I, she's really pretty. 
I, I, I'm obs- I, I sometimes I go on Facebook even more than I do Instagram and everything else because it's like a slot machine of like, who's pregnant, who's yes. married, who's oh losing themselves. my God, oh. yes, 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 I love, I have a high school friend, her and I will kind of keep each other updated to be like, oh my God, they had a second baby on purpose. Yeah. Or like, oh my God. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're, they're married. Because they're married and they're, they're, yeah, when they're having, it's a choice to have children and they're doing it. Or they're like, oh shit, they got, they got married and divorced before I even got married, like, damn. Or it, and it's weird seeing someone who you used to like be with, yep. like have a baby. You're yeah, like, Yeah, oh. I haven't experienced that yet, but- um, Really? Yeah. You haven't. So, okay. Someone that I've that I've, I've dated, no. So wow. maybe, are you maybe just this bad luck Chuck kind of thing? Where right. like maybe. everyone you have been with has not- Has not, no, <laughs> able I know. To reproduce. I, yeah. Engage, one is engaged. And then the other ones, uh, that's the, the one that's engaged is the farthest in the-, uh, the Oh, I've got every step along the way. You are, you're also a, a big ass hoe though. So like your chances <laughs> of having someone that are at that level are much higher. A word from our sponsors. <laughs> Durex. What is the sponsor? Oh yeah, I wish. It's not Durex. <laughs> but it could be. <laughs> but it could be. So our initial conversation that we screamed at Matt to stop speaking about because we're like, let's get it on the pod was about going to high school and university slash college and having like a normal, semblance of life. And the reason why I brought it up is because you guys are running, like, I, I wanna compare it to a ship. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> and you guys like have this energy where it seems like you did like the morning broadcast news at your high school. <laughs> like you're, you're here doing the sound clap and everything. You guys know what like the ISO level is. <laughs> I don't, I'm not this technical on my- You're making us nerds. Uh, no, I, in a way, but I was that nerd. I just wish I continued it on. <laughs> it seems like you guys have not, you know, missed a step this entire way. I don't know way. how to do any of this. I understand camera stuff. So like ISO and like white balance, like I can handle all that, but like any of that scary stuff over there on the tower, no idea what's going on there. I, I do yeah. the I do the creative side okay. and uh, Jeremy does the nerd thing. So Thumbna- don't group thumbnails. me into this. Don't group me into oh. this nerd category here. But so you, but so what was it? So were you like a nerd in high school? There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't a nerd. I did well. I was mid tier popular and more of an arts slash sports kid. Oh, yeah. okay. Mid tier popular. Yeah, it was mid-tier popular. Or that's sports. not a show on Netflix. That needs mid-tier to be. Mid-tier popular? Yeah. yeah, I was mid-tier. Like I got invited and was friends with select people from the popular group, but kind of had my own friend group. There's like popular and then there's real popular. Like you're the people's man. Right. And then you're just in what? The good looking group that everyone knows about? Right. Like, I mean, we had a pretty hot, small high school though. So there was maybe like 200 people in our grade. Whoa. How big was oh. yours? Oh, he's from Texas. It was 4,000 oh, yeah. a grade. No, probably like 400 people per grade, I think. Oh, okay. So like when oh. our, our or maybe year- more, That's on the smaller side for Texas. That's fucking huge. Uh, no. I think it's getting smaller now, but it used to be pretty big. That means I your dating was like, pool is just so big though. No, it wasn't because all the girls in my grade wanted to date guys who were in the grade above. Mm. Oh. And it was like that the entire time. There was never, yeah. like by our yeah. senior year, then people started dating each other, but yeah. I never really had a serious relationship in college at all. Even would, in college? No, oh wait, no, high school. Oh, my bad. <laughs> not that there's That's anything like, wrong with not having a serious relationship in college. I would like date other girls from other speech teams at different high schools. Oh, so it's like, oh, date. she goes to another school. I did that too. My yeah. first boyfriend was from a different high school. <laughs> that was the move. That was the move. A little like pressure off like, you know. It's just, you, you don't have to like fight your like best friend for a girl all the time. Right. Which yeah. is a totally normal thing in high school. That would be so incredibly weird after the age of 17. My best friend though did like hook up with the girl that like, it was like my, my first like real make out and stuff. Like <gasps> mm-hmm. she was like <gasps> mine scandal. and then she went and hooked up with him. <gasps> and I, I I like could never Devastated. look at either of them the same way. Oh, so man. were you really not best friends after? Was that the end of it? No, we're still best friends oh. now. <laughs> you just don't talk about it, right? We just don't talk about it. I get it. But I get it. that kind of scarred me a little yeah, bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Like, we'll, we'll handle that in therapy. Yeah, definitely, yeah, we'll that definitely. In therapy. definitely. I don't know. It's <laughs> I've actually gotten over it so much, and I actually feel like it brought us stronger together. So in a way, it helped. That that makes you the bigger person for sure. Definitely. Yeah, that definitely makes you the bigger person. What were we talking about as well? Oh, like do you tan easily? Yeah, <laughs> yeah we super were at deep psoriasis. Conferences. We were in high school. We were at jobs. Now we're at tan. Yeah, yeah. I tan pretty well. Yeah. You do tan pretty well. Thank but you. But you also like for being a white person. Yep, here you, she goes. You mm-hmm. like you just <laughs> rebuke the idea of sunscreen. Okay. Rebuke. Which doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Re- please. I just, the problem is I don't, if I'm only gonna be out for like an hour, I I roll the dice. 
So dumb. And now we're roll yeah, the dice. Roll the dice. You're gonna be out all day. Wear some sunscreen. So wear some sunscreen. But like, I think I've heard that you should wear it every day. You're and supposed I to wear it all the time. Do you watch Haram on YouTube or Har the guy Hiram? Who Hiram. Sorry, I've never said his name I out loud. <laughs> I'm let's, so glad the first time got to be on who, here. Who, who do we watch? Hiram. Hiram. I love Hiram. I completely changed my skinny care routine because <gasps> of him. Did. But I bought tinted SPF. That's okay. And but then but it, and I looked fine. But I would wear like you know white shirts oh. out in, during a hot day, and I'd no. wipe it off, and I'm like, what is this? It looked like I was wearing makeup. It's your face. Well, you are technically wearing a little bit of makeup. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. For guys who aren't used to that, like as a girl, like I would never wipe my face with my shirt. Like oh, I'm over here it. just doing this like an oh, idiot. Yeah. 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 When it's Man. tinted moisturizer. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you guys, I feel like are not men with of that. nail polish. <laughs> this is new for me, though. This is not like and a did we usual run out? thing. Uh, no, I and just wanted the to do something. Listener. I wanted. Oh yes, I have my nails painted, but it's every other nail is painted. So two on one hand, three on the other. That's a vibe. Um, but I did it because my girlfriend, though, is the type of girlfriend who, like, she has. She invites people over. She's a host, and then she just starts doing chores and like getting ready <laughs> when people come over. Like, <laughs> The party starts and then my girlfriend's painting her nails. And I'm like, Go people on. are here yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you're just like getting ready or she starts taking out the trash and like yeah. organizing. People get here and he's like stepping into the shower. I'm like, okay, here we go, single host. Yeah, and then now I'm out there having a host. Because I've been hooking up the sound system. No, making no, I sure mean, the ice I mean, is like on parties. the beer. This is different. I mean like parties when we have social events, <sighs> he's always like taking clothes <laughs> off, getting into the shower. And I'm like, people are arriving. <laughs> well, they don't want to see me like this. Yeah. I mean, I guess if you're stinky, like yeah, head on in there, but like, you know, 3% yeah, of our friends are on time anyway. Like punctuality is not exactly- I just want to say, and I want to vouch for you, Matt, that you showed up at eight o'clock on the dot. On the dot. I was a little worried if I wasn't going to show up, but I am punctual all the time. You can always count on me for that. You I, you seem like you give off the energy that you were a punctual person. Yeah, not out of like being anal. And I feel like um, everyone should be on time, but I think it's like a respect thing. I, I, I feel like everyone should be on agree. time. Agree. Yeah. I fully agree. Or I have a good agree. story, one well, of the two. True, true yeah. that, but like our, my friends, they never do. And it's frustrating because David will be like, come to our house at three. And then I have to think like vlog squad time. And I'm like, really? Okay, so it's starting at five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I can't, I can't live with myself showing up that late. So, right, you know? just in case. It's mm -hmm. the time that everyone shows up on time and then you're the late one. Irene right? is notoriously late. And like you have find my friends and you're just like, yes. I'm here and on you're time. Like, I can see you still at home. He's on the toilet. Just like, <laughs> oh shit, chilling. I forgot. Uh, what? Yeah. Uh -huh. Buddy, come on. I they, see, I, it, it, being late gives me anxiety. Me too, me too. And by the way, way, shout out Zane. We know you're watching. No, you know, Zane, Zane and Keith also showed out, up. They also showed up extremely on time for our recording. But they made, they made a note about, they were like, we knew that we had to be on time. Like somebody, they, they made like a, they, you could tell well, there was a conversation. Well, because I feel like it was also like new friends type of thing. Uh -huh. And then you put an extra little, little uh -huh. oomph into your effort. Right, yeah, 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 right, yeah, yeah, right. yeah, for new friends. I feel bad. But like the important thing is you can be on time, which just makes it even more frustrating when they're not you on time. You and this one's not on time. You're like, I know you have the ability. Yeah. Oh, I stress out about Ubers. Like if an Uber's here, that guy has to continue on with his night. Yes, they can wait five to seven minutes, depending on what kind of Uber you booked. But I'm like, babe, we're out the door. <laughs> This guy has places he needs to be and money he needs to make. I have a question. So in one of the podcast episodes I listened to prior to today, there you made a comment about how your girlfriend takes a really long time to get out of the car. Yes. So what? what is, I've never heard that before. Like, okay. So, so yeah, what's, she, what's the to-do list that she's doing? She just hasn't like, uh, gotten her purse together. She, my girlfriend always, it, there's the purse and then there's like the tote bag <laughs> with other stuff. And there's stuff okay. she's taken out of the tote bag while we've been driving around, like your water bottle and all of that. Yeah. it's The point is, I don't really focus on what she's doing, uh -huh. but I know that there's at least two minutes from the time I'm already inside to the time where she is just <laughs> out of the out car. Of the <laughs> this seems helpable. It's not, doesn't annoy me that much. <laughs> But man, it's it's every like we when you're pulling up to the house, I'm excited. Like to, I, oh, to I'm getting in, my yeah. wallet and stuff together. I'm putting my stuff in my pockets. Let's get out of the car. My, and gotta gotta organize the tote to the purse. That's funny you notice that. I think about that every day, every time <laughs> we're in the car. Well, for that to be a conversation topic, you're like, oh, that's a thing. That's oh, no, it, that's so funny. It's a little thing, but it doesn't drive me crazy, but you have to fall in love with like the little annoying yeah, things yeah, that yeah, you yeah. love about your partner. And it's like, that's one of the things like, I would say like in a romantic comedy, like, you know, the 10 things I hate about you. Right. It's like, that's I love how long it takes for you to get out of a car. It, right. like, While I, your eye twitches a little bit, I love. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you've, see, you've seen the countdown clock. You know how far we are from the destination. Yeah. Fact, we're going home. You know exactly when we'll be there. And you know, the guy's just like the, 
all right, we're good to go. Like, we just the taps on, okay, we got the phone, we got the wallet, we're headed out. Here's yeah. the thing about women's bags okay. is that they make them small looking, <laughs> but they're actually like a Mary Poppins bag. Like the amount of things that I can have in a tiny little mini backpack is truly shocking. Bring, I, I wish the man bag thing was a thing and you can do it, but I think there is something though, if a man, like if you're having a bag, it looks like you're bringing your work with you. Okay. Mm, like, for guys? Like if you, yeah. if I'm at a bar and a guy does have his like ba a bag with him, yeah. I think like, oh, where did you, where you, you just from? get from work or sure. you have somewhere you need to be? And it kind of makes you nervous. I but like it. a girl, you got all your stuff. Yeah, you got your and stuff. A guy can wear the bag. But for me, it just communicates like, I just have. I just came from a meeting. Yeah, and I want to yeah. feel like, I don't have, I'm not tied down to anything right now. Yeah, well, you know what it is though, it's because your girlfriend is holding all your shit in her little bag <laughs> and that's why you feel so free. Yeah, pretty <laughs> yeah. much. That's fair, yeah. that's fair. Babe, can you hold the keys? Can you take my ID? Yeah, I do say those things often. Do you have space for this in your bag? Well, also you like to grab the the key ring that's got the fuzzy this, the, the unnecessary keys, the this, the that, that would like, I would look like I have just had like a, a 14 inch penis. I don't think you carry it though. Well, I mean, I, that's something that I feel like would be appealing for some people. Yeah, but eventually it's like eh, taken. It doesn't matter. And also, who am I trying to fool? True. Right. Yeah, There's true. nothing better though than giving stuff to your girlfriend. Like, can you hold this for me? <laughs> it's like the best act of love. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I, Is that I, what you're feeling on your side? Uh -huh. uh huh. I'm always just like, can you hold it? She's like, yeah, of course. I'm like, great. Now that's someone else's responsibility <laughs> and it's true. not mine. That is true. But then, if I have something important, it's like my passport the other day, I was like, can you just take this? Yeah. I don't want that's this. That's stressful. Even though it's, I'll be the one that's completely fucked if Dude. it's lost. I've been having the worst anxiety about my passport, like, because I'm about to go to Italy in two or three days. <laughs> um, but I knew where my passport was. Oh, uh -oh. fuck. But just knowing you have to go and find it. And I think it's in that box because right. we just moved and stuff yes. were in boxes. And today was finally the, the day where I was like, I should just confirm I have my passport. Hands on it. Thankfully I did, but I was avoiding that for so long. Just in case. Just in case. Just in case. Oh, I'm the same way. I also have like all these visa papers because I'm Canadian. And like when I say visa papers, it's like an eight and a half by 11 that isn't like laminated or you can't like alter it. But if it gets water damage or anything happens to it, it's void. Remember the five oh. star folders in, in like high school? Yes. They have, they yes. Have, I have to carry one of those when I travel. Yeah. Oh, it's a yeah. lot. Uh -huh. It's a lot. It's all here. It's, yeah. I, I'm not even kidding. I slide over my little duotang and I'm like, it's all here. Uh -huh. Do you know the word duotang? Duotang? No. Okay. She Is drops that. Can, yeah. She drops it's that. It's a Canadian like, that's thing a, we learned. That's not a thing. Doesn't oh, it exist. isn't a thing? Like you made it up? No, and it's you... oh, no, literally when he says it's not a thing, he just means it doesn't exist in America and it's prevalent in Canada. So what right. he's trying to say. Not no, a thing. I, well, at least there's like some yeah. geographical culture yep. behind it. My mom would always say <laughs> Groovy Tuesday. <laughs> and I thought that was a real phrase. And when I had my first internship in college, <laughs> my boss was like, All right, Groovy. And I go, Tuesday. And he goes, Huh? <laughs> and I'm like, Groo You know the phrase Groovy Tuesday? And he goes, no, I don't. And then I start Googling Groovy Tuesday and all I could find was one 70s disco song that wasn't even that big. And I messaged my mom, I go, mom, what's Groovy Tuesday from? And she goes, oh, it's just a Cindyism. I it's something a I say. Like I go, you can't, in my whole life, you taught me, she would say Groovy Tuesday. You know what? Oh my God. This is gonna come out on a Groovy Tuesday. On this a Groovy Tuesday. Sure, let's call it a Groovy Tuesday, oh, Tuesday hell, podcast. Yeah, this groovy Make Tuesday it a thing, podcast. let's spread it. Cindy. There you go, Groovy Tuesday by Cindy. We're super excited to share a Groovy Tuesday with groovy you. Groovy Tuesday. That's fantastic. Oh my, my mom God. also says, uh, shoot a pickle, like instead of like, uh, like cursing. But my shoot mom, a pickle? My mom curses, but she'll just go, oh, shoot a pickle. <laughs> that's Texas. Yeah, that's, that's Texas. Texas. That is yeah. so cute. And when she's different. on the phone, she'll go like, instead of like, talk to you later, she goes, talk to you later. Like it's like, it's well, own you know, That's device. so cute. I'm trying to think, I'm sure my family, I'm sure my family has so many of those. See, my mom's a, a, a stenographer. So she, oh. she, she's- Get out of here. In the courts. He's so, so excited. So language is very important <laughs> to her. Okay, stenographer. Okay, I'm on like stenographer TikTok. <laughs> no, like, you're not. You, like, there's like a I've, whole I've world seen, of yeah, stenographer. Yeah, yeah. People have yeah. like cute stenographer. Yeah, very cute keyboards. Cause that's like a lost art form. Okay, well, yeah. why don't you just keep going then? Because I've never found no, anyone that I I've said that you, to. So I send Jeremy like prime TikTok content. See, he doesn't watch TikTok. So I only show him, I force him at the end of the night to watch the hot ones that I've saved personally. And by force him, him he physically sits on top of me. and It's like, we're gonna watch these TikToks. Yeah, cause I've curated, I've curated yes. all the best TikToks because he won't watch them if I just like text them throughout the day. And so I think that this fall, like has fallen into that category. Cause I texted you one a couple months ago of a stenographer TikTok and I loved that one, 
But if you want to, and I- And I, this is why I physically force them at the end of the day to watch TikTok. So what, what's on stenographer TikTok? Because uh, yes. people stenographing, but you never <laughs> see, because in life you, you, you watch a, a court case and you just see that person typing, like but the, you yeah. never see what they're doing. They're not going to show that camera angle, but you get to see it. And it's kind of fascinating. It's like typing music to language in a way. In like shorthand. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they it's have their own wild. language. It's wild. What is it? But is it going to die out? Can't they just like? So the way that he's always described it is that like his mom has created her own language basically, and so she's the only one that can type and read in the way that she. Sten she has her own dictionary. Like oh. you get like you start with like a baseline, but then you get to like have creative freedom because think about the amount of new words that have popped up in the last year, let alone forty. Oh, so like you just kind of keep adding on to yours and like abbreviate the way you want. And like, you know, like at the hot keys on a keyboard. Yes. Same thing. Wow. But also, and you say like, can they do that automatically? Yes. But the reason, and I'm gonna make this very brief. The reason that they try and do it in a way that is like uh, on paper as opposed to just a recording is some people, you can tell by the way that they speak that they might not be as educated or they might have struggled with this. And they might have said, Ooh. the idea is no interpretation of how someone thinks they're saying what it is in court. You're reading it on a page. Oh. Everyone's on the same playing field. Interesting. And it's actually to help like, cause like you're in a room full of people who are typically used to being there. And you're the person who's new there on trial mm. for something you may or may not have done. That's a fucked scenario. So it's like, how do we level the playing field in the sense of like bringing a somewhat equal medium to an otherwise not always equal, Surrounding. Wow, yeah, that's so true. It takes the bias out of like how it would be spoken. Yep. And can you imagine huh. if something was like ninety two percent accurate as an as like a you know like an AI doing it? Not good enough. Uh -huh. Not yeah, no, enough. it wouldn't. Yeah. But it, 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 when you guys ever get like in big like family arguments, does your mom just start like <laughs> moving her hands, like keeping you know, track of the cop? Like she's stenographing what she's saying to you. Enough, on like, her side of the yeah, argument, just, like, yeah. Instead of twiddling your thumbs, you just I think my mom has away. a very bad memory for doing what she does. And just like, you did not say that. That's not what she said at all. You said this. She's yeah. like, well, I didn't think about it. I didn't have my machine. I wasn't listening. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah. So that's my stenographer story. Donna the Adorable. stenographer. How do we get there? So groovy Tuesday. Oh, Groovy, groovy Tuesday. Tuesday. Groovy yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. And Cindy. And Cindy. And Cindy. Oh man, I, I feel like uh, my mom's gonna text me after this podcast comes out and she's gonna tell me all of the weird things that we say. We definitely have a lot of weird names for things in my family. I feel like- Like Duotang? No, that's a real fucking word. Oh my God. Duotang is like a small paper mini binder that's got those little butterfly clips on the inside that you would put paper. Okay. Yeah. So like a binder, a binder, but you call it a do a tang. Yeah. Well, because then we would call the binder the hard one. Well, okay, well that's, oh, all right. So okay. what? <laughs> <laughs> Very straight, yeah, it's. Well, because are both things, would they both be binders for you guys? I don't know why you would need two words for that. It sounds like you live like in this dystopian young yeah. adult, like Okay, so book, that's, that's what like, every oh, American says about Canadians. <laughs> and a do a tang. Yeah. It's like soft cover binder is a do a tang and a hard cover binder is a binder. Well, I'm on do a tang TikTok. And You're so, on do a tang TikTok. Yeah, no, I just, <laughs> there are certain words and I'm like, that's a new fucking language. We don't, that's not a thing. We'll be dating, like, I'm sure it'll be to the day that we die until we find, like every day we find something that it, even though our countries are literally physically touching, yeah we'll find a difference in between Canada and That's America. adorable though. And, I, and I'm really glad you guys like have each other and you guys have do that. this together. Usually it's screaming. Like usually it's like- What do you mean? Smarties are better than m &Ms. Wait, so stop, stop. <laughs> smarties. Yes. No, no, you, you, know, have you, you know what Smarties are. Oh, I love Smarties. Are, are they better These than are, m &Ms? No. By the way- The chocolate ones. Talking about chocolate Smarties. There's no ch chocolate Smarties exist. Stop exactly. it right now. Exactly. No, they don't. No, they, they don't. don't. They don't exist. Okay, so the thing uh, that you're are thinking served? about, the thing, how, are they, how are they served on a platter? Yeah. So the thing that you're, you're thinking, thinking about, about the little twists. Tw twi or sticks? The yeah. sticks with the little chalky candies, right? Oh, and a little centipede. Yes. Yes. yes, 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 yes. So those in Canada are called rockets. Okay. It's exact same branding, exact same typeface font. Like Dumb. it's the exact same thing. It's rockets. And then Smarties, I don't know. And what do you call rockets, by the way? Rockets. What no, the mean? ones that go to space. Rockets. Smarties. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. it tracks. Got and it. then there's a chocolate or candy coated chocolate that's different than M&Ms that are called Smarties made by Nestle. And they're puck shaped? Yes, but not not in the same shape. They're like M&M shaped. Yeah, that's not pucks, they're rounded. Is that not a puck? A Smartie is a puck, like in, in yeah. terms of the shape. Okay, it's, like that's, that's that's a it's a disc. Yeah, it's a disc, yeah, yeah. So no, it's shaped like an M&M. Okay, okay. Okay, so okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but are these served in a roll? Bag. Rockets are. Uh, okay. <laughs> 
so your chocolate smarty thing is not really, uh, uh, you don't have a, 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 not a lot to support this. Th so the chocolate smarties are just like a candy coated chocolate, like an M&M, but better. Listen, when we have Matt King back, we will do a full, what's it called when you just eat a bunch of fucking food? A candy coated chocolate is a M&M. &M. Yeah, a &M. but it's a smarty, but well, it's better. It's is a different. It sweet? I, it's exactly what an M&M &M is, but, but think better. Okay. <laughs> All right. You got it. You need to have these yeah, candies I'm gonna have them on, on deck. I wasn't prepared for this conversation, but next time I see you, I will have Smarties on hand. Okay. We need to do like a, a, ca a Canadian candy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and do you stand behind like ketchup potato chips? Ketchup chips. Yeah. Um, You've heard of that though. I'm sure. Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Todd buys them sometimes. Is he okay? Um, He's doing better. Okay. But, uh, he's been better. He's yeah. been better, but I, I sometimes will resort to them because I, I always want like a good spicy chip at like the end of the night or I get something. It. I get it. But And the ketchup chips, like the only thing you can have, oh. it's not that bad. It's just, uh, it's hit All or right. miss. Lays, if you're listening and we know you are, they're okay. I like pickle chips though, pickle chips. Oh, we like dill pickle chips? Mm -hmm. Lost mm. meat, would you like pickles? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, see, I don't like yeah, pickles, pickle so it wouldn't make sense for me. <sighs> You're fat. missing out. No, 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 in every relationship, there needs to be one person likes pickles and one that does not. Oh, That's well, true. So my girlfriend and I, we love pickles. But then I'm, do you have to fight for the pickle? Um, I think I go for the pickles a little bit more. Mm. Like my girlfriend like doesn't like finish things. Like I'm the one who oh, like goes like after cleans it. cleans up, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she'll have a it. soda, but like there's still like half a soda left. And so then I make that my soda, Right. but I'm done with stuff fast like oh so you're so you're she's halfway done hers you're fully done hers and then you so you eat a meal and a half at the point at like that she's done half yeah, yeah and then it's mine that's that's I great mean, that's that's, that's like yeah that's compatibility to a t there yeah. you need to have like the weird quirks that would piss anybody else off that just kind of work like i like pickles and then i eat both pickles right and it works out well right do you like pickles like in a bag like in the sleeve like a big thick pickle you would love te Texas, like it's standard <laughs> in movie theaters to get, like you can buy a big pickle. In yeah. a theater? Yes. Yeah. It's the best. Oh, and then you can like open it in your like popcorn kind of. So like the juices kind of get, get I don't know about that. Yeah, pickle I don't know flavor about popcorn. That. Don't knock it till you try it, y'all. <laughs> I would try it. I would try it. Cause I, I like, I like like dill pickle chips. So I would try that. It's more the soggy that makes me nervous. Yeah, that's what I was the thinking. The pickle juice on the soggy popcorn. Ooh, I, I like it. You're like, I'm down soggy with the popcorn. popcorn. Parmesan, I get the Parmesan cheese and I put that on top of my popcorn too. With pickle juice? You know what? It's the pickle juice. Just, <laughs> it's dark in that theater. <laughs> I just want to know what's going on. on. <laughs> Anything just hits a different taste. So I don't know. Um, well, for I, all 12 of you that are left. <laughs> <laughs> Riveting content. All right, so our home garage gym is now officially getting four days a week of use for me. I've gotten my workout routine back. I've gotten back into my groove, got my workout routine, and and my muscles are huge. True, uh, you are you're doing all you are huge. doing all those things, and I'm doing you know you're doing all those things. I'm I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Anyways, finding time in in busy schedules can make working out very tough, which is why Peloton has become an absolute lifesaver. With Peloton, you can start building fitness into your routine with thousands of cardio and strength classes that take as little as fifteen minutes. Plus, the original Peloton bike now costs $400 less, so it's now the perfect time to start making those goals a reality. I'm personally someone who likes to just like bang out a class in the morning. Like if I don't do it in the morning, it's not gonna happen. So it has been my morning wake up routine. And with their inspiring instructors, you can find what motivation style fits you. They also have a bomb music curated classes with artist collaborations and instructor curated playlists. The music experience is pretty special. With an endless variety of live and on-demand cycling classes, live and on-demand strength yoga and stretching classes off the bike, you'll keep coming back for more. Experience motivation like never before with the Peloton bike now $400 less go to onepeloton.com to learn more that's o n e p e l o t o n.com okay i don't know about you guys but there's a lot going on in my world and i can't always control the chaos around me and neither can you but you know what you can control vibes in particular, the sounds that you're listening to. And with a pair of Raycon wireless earbuds, you can do just that. I've been absolutely loving my Raycon earbuds. I wear them when I work out, when I handle emails, or even when I'm just like a little annoyed with Jeremy and just like want to kind of tone him out a little bit. Isn't that great? They have a, a Jeremy mode? They have a Jeremy mode. Yeah, and, and then what's great about that is it actually amplifies whatever I say, so oh, it makes it very clear. In, I in suddenly more... am no longer interested in Jeremy mode. Yeah, yeah, just like it hones in on my voice. It finds it. Isn't that great mm. that they went and made that I specifically? I actually would like to talk to Raycon about that feature. Well, you know, no, me too, because I just, like, I just want to get mm. back. But anyway, the, the, these Raycon's earbuds have over eight hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life. And they are very, 
very comfortable. And I've said many, many times that my ears kind of remind me of like, um, um, that. what's that, no, that big elephant? No. Yeah, 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 I have elephant ears, I do. Oh, I thought you were gonna go in detail about um, your wax issues. Well, that, we don't need to. <laughs> That's need where to, I thought this was going. We don't need to go, well, we can, listen, we can get into the rubberized silicone gel tips later that are easy to clean. We can, we can get into that, but okay. realistically right now what I'm talking about is I've got weird sized ears and you know what? They fit like a charm. Also the built-in mic, Fantastic. So when I'm making calls and walking around and screaming the bottom of the house all day long. It's my super favorite. It picks it up in a pristine matter. Super love that about, I mean, are these maybe, I don't Jeremy mode is not my favorite. Made for me. Not Truly though. Raycon gives you three different listening modes to fit your needs. Well, four. Four plus Jeremy mode. Yeah. Pure mode, good for listening to podcasts and mainly our podcast. We've got balance mode and bass mode. And? Jeremy mode. Yeah, good, 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 right. good. Jeremy mode. Plus they are half the price of other premium audio brands and they sound just as good. And you know how much we love a deal here at Wild Till 9. So right now, Wild Till 9 listeners, you, Tillies, get 15% off your Raycon order at buyraycon.com slash wild. That's buyraycon.com slash wild to save 15% off the Raycons. Buyraycon.com slash wild. And try Jeremy mode today. <laughs> I don't know anything about Texas. I've never been, and I, I know. know nothing about Texas. Don't I we know. host beauty con and stuff all the time? Uh, the last time I went to was in New York. Oh, okay. Also, when's the last beauty con? I don't know. Yeah, it, have they been still in business? Yes. Yeah? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, I hear okay. so much about Texas, and <laughs> the only people that I know from Texas are actually you and Liza Koshi. And so I don't know Everyone if Everyone from Texas is like, like those two, actually. You know Janine. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Janine's yeah. from Texas. I don't know Janine that well. Like oh, I know okay. you and Liza much better than Janine. See, this is the thing is, I assume that you're friends with like all these other- Influencer, <laughs> yes. yeah, lifestyle girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah, but uh, Liza's Houston, I'm Dallas. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, got it. But like when I think of like Texas, I think of like a heavy, like Southern accent and I meet you and Liza and I'm it's like- different. Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah, we're uh, yeah, we're not. We don't have the Texas accents, but there is a difference between Dallas and Houston, like in terms of the Texas like accent. Like Dallas is very like King of the Hill, like oh like God damn it, Bobby, how about that? Ain't that something? <laughs> this is incredible. Very here, Houston gets more like accusatory. They kind of like so what you do? They work down at the oil fields. They kind of draw things out a bit. There's That's a difference. closer to Kentucky. Yeah, that sounds K like you're Kentucky. Kentucky. I don't even know what the Kentucky accent, but no, like, that was much closer. Yeah, give it, give it, give it Kentucky. I, no, I won't do it after that performance. Oh my God. We found this random show after finding a TikTok account. What was it called? Letter Kenny. Letter, Letter Kenny. Oh, wait, they're all talking in that weird- it's Fucking weird. It's a Canadian? It's a Canadian. It's okay, but it's like the most hardcore Northern Canada accent that I've ever heard. Okay, yeah. so and try I, it. Yeah. I. I see, fuck, I don't know. I would, <laughs> I would need like, I would need like a sentence, but like all- It was the, nearly Irish. It was, it was so heavy, but like some characters say it more than others. And you can tell that like, I can't even do it. But it's like, a bud, a bud. Like, it's like, <laughs> you think of the hockey bros that say that and they've got their hockey flow and- Is the hockey in Texas? Um, not a thing, but it is a thing. The Dallas Stars, I mean, we won the Stanley Cup in like Huge. 99 and 2000. Yeah. Um, and those years were close. And, but- Mm, it's more of like kind of a rich kid sport. It's kind Got of a it. lacrosse down there. Lacrosse of, of the South. Yeah, in a way, though lacrosse does exist, but like our high school hockey team had to combine with all the other high schools in our district to Same. make up a team. Same, you know? And I was in huh. Illinois, mind you. That's how it's still. Uh, yeah, that's that's surprising. Cause like you guys get snow. We fucking do. Yeah, yeah. 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 But Dallas awesome. gets a little bit of snow. Uh, a little bit, it freezes over. Yeah. Like every other, year kind yeah. of. Yeah. Really? Like, I'm so jealous of people who had just like snow days. Have you ever you had know? a snow day? Matt King, yes, you- Yes, a freeze day. Are you fuck fucking your school off. closed because it's the ground froze? Yeah, or just like a little bit of snow that much. Enough to make a snowman like, you know, <laughs> yay tall, like less than three feet. A toddler snowman. Oh yeah, the town shut down. Yeah. The town but, shut okay, down. Okay, but there's no, there's no snow plows. Uh, no, not really. No, no. Right. You just, oh, you just wait till the sun just... comes out by like <laughs> 3 p.m. and then the snow day is over. Right. Mother nature, snow removal yeah, report services. Report to school at four o'clock. Yeah. yeah. I'm not kidding. In Toronto, when we would have like four feet of snow, that's, that's probably an exaggeration. Probably like three feet of snow is more realistic. Like 48 inches, really? Yeah, I mean, it was especially like when you're trying to get on a streetcar on the side of the road, when the plows have come through, then the the actual height of like the the little um, snow banks are actually like three and a half, four feet. And like school just doesn't cancel. Like snow days are not a thing because of the infrastructure that all of like the Canadian cities have. Yeah. And it's hearing that I'm outraged, <laughs> outraged. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't move north. Oh, 
no, no, no. I'm going to stay exactly where I am right yeah, we're, now. We're at the actual peak of where we would ever live. Right. But yeah. now because of Zoom and everything and everyone's been so used to working from home and doing school from home, mm. this snow day no longer exists. Even if you can't go to school, you're still gonna I be going up to TikTok school. I saw talk about that. Yeah. They were like RIP the snow day because yeah. like you just hop on Zoom. Sucks to be young, sorry. Sucks to be young. Yeah. Do you guys have like tornadoes though no, growing up? Oh no. Really? Oh, well, you guys have worse tornadoes than us. That's uh, for sure. Yes, for sure. Well, but Oklahoma I never like, experienced Texas. that bad of a one, but they really made it in Texas. They made it seem like <laughs> it's gonna happen. Uh -huh. <laughs> Your home will get ripped away in the entire, <laughs> like they would make us go out into the hallway and just like duck down against the walls. Like yeah, this is it. Yes, for practice. I'm like, why are we in the hall? Can't you just have like a tornado proof room? Right, that you all go to. Especially in Texas. You yeah. would think that the infrastructure would be there. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, we didn't really, uh, we were just talking about the other day how like when earthquakes happen here, I lose all, I have- Motor function. Uh, all motor function is gone. I have no inhibitions. Like I completely freeze and I don't know what to do. The last earthquake, we were on the couch. It started happening and I said, oh, we should get under the table. And I hopped up and I got under the table and I was already in and I was on my knees and I was underneath the wood table and Lauren was in the exact same position. I was like- <laughs> On the couch. I was like, now's was like, a good time. Earthquake, earthquake, yeah. earthquake, <laughs> earthquake. It's like, I wanna see it. It's like, <laughs> like is it the chicken or the rooster that just looks up during the storm and just like with an open mouth and just ah. And <laughs> I was oh like, my God, I just like wet. freeze. I just like, I feel like all of our peers who grew up here, like they learned like what to do in an earthquake and they just have that like reaction and it happens. And I'm just like, this is so fucking unnatural. I don't know what's going on. Well, I'm here to tell you, didn't grow up anywhere near California, <laughs> but if things are shaking above me, I'm getting underneath something it's that can hit. It's just the weirdest thing. It's, it's weird, weird because you know, you always hear about earthquakes before you experience one and how do people describe it? They go, it's like a big truck going by. Yeah, And I'm like, yeah. what does that mean? Like you hear the truck and then when it happens, you're like, is there a truck you're outside? Like, that's, the truck. That's, that's it. That's a truck. Um, I know, Every I always say every time I take off at LAX, I'm always looking down at LA, I'm like, hope it, uh, <laughs> still glad there. I'm getting out of town. <laughs> oh my God, San Andreas just opens up. <laughs> It's long overdue. Stop, everyone says that. This is this is how you Wait, felt when stop. people said that your house was gonna get ripped out of the ground. Yeah, You're now that person I for know. Californians. But have you looked at this simulator though? I think we're kind of fine in this area. We're fine. Oh, this area is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah this yeah. area is pretty good. Yeah. Some places but are, some places are right. not oh, so good. But also you drive by them on the street and you're like, your house is on stilts. Yeah. Do you, oh yeah. Oh like the, yeah, uh, no, no, no. What do they call those types of houses? What Stupid. Are, the, oh, what's what's that toy set that used to like wooden blocks and st like the wooden oh, cylinders? Um, like Tinker Toys? Yeah, Tinker Toys. They call yeah. them like a Tinker, a Tinker Toy house. house. Yeah, see at any point in time, I'm living in a Tinker <coughs> Toy house. Yeah. No. It's a big no. no. Big I always no. want to know what those real estate agents say to the people. Yeah, to sell that. Oh, this view is to it's die, to die for. It's, and they're and like, to so literally die for. Well, and that, you, you pull up the, this house was built in 1934. It's been up through some of the big ones. Don't worry about it. And you're like, yeah, but like, when was the last time it got tuned? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. like, just gum and rubber bands Hard all pass. down. Especially, especially in California, every time you open up any wall, even in new houses, you're like, what the fuck was everybody smoking? Yeah. Like, no way was this to code. I wanna pivot really quick. So something that we say on our podcast all the time in episodes where we give dating advice is we always make mention of like, if he wanted to, he would. Ooh. Okay, so if he wanted to, he would. So it's when girls are like, or their significant others are like someone they're pursuing. Like if he wanted to call you, he would. If he wanted to make time for you, he would. Well, yeah, ladies. Absolutely. So I wanna, ladies. I wanna, I, I feel like you are the literal prime example after listening to the timeline of you meeting your girlfriend and the process of how that all went down. Down. My man, yes, fucking you are. Gave a shit. I feel like you are the prime example of if he wanted to, he would. Because and I you did. did. But I don't really know if she wanted to <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning. I mean, you you were persistent. But she didn't say no. She kept saying yes. Yeah. But it wasn't that like immediate interest. But yeah. So, um, so our podcast is about 103% female. Yeah. 18 to 34. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think, I think it's so, I think it's so encouraging though for our audience to hear that like when someone was interested, they just pursued and it was as simple as that. We said this and, and Matt was like, hold on, I gotta pee. Hold on, we gotta, could we <laughs> yeah. gotta take this seriously? Gotta I'm, refill up right now. Cause this is- This is how serious it is. We've been talking about this exact motif for, I don't know, since podcast number two. Literally since one. podcast number two. Yeah, because I feel like we have a lot of 
female, I mean, literally 103% female audience who is like, why won't he text me back? Like, why won't he put in the effort? And I was like, bitch, if he wanted to, he would. Mm -hmm. And yeah. here you are, the living, breathing example of that. And, may, and just to preface it, he may be interested. He's just kind of also not ready to. And to, in my own story though, but I don't know, don't lead into too much hope with that. But <laughs> The way it worked out though, it was because um, I been, I was like single for hmm, about like two, two and a half years before okay. I really started to pursue. Um, but when I met her, I was like a year and a half single and I was still dating other people. You know, I was um, just enjoying the life of being single. And I saw her at a party and I couldn't take my eyes off her. I was very interested in her. And uh, Wait, should, hang should on, I preface? Hang on, hang the, on. Can you can you deliver the line that you said to her? The first thing you said to her? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. Go well, okay. So. Um, I was at a, uh, it was like an Airbnb. It was a watch party, a bunch of like UT people, Alabama, Georgia University people. of Texas. University of Texas, uh -huh. not Tennessee. Let's get it right, okay. Texas. <laughs> um, the new entrant to the SEC. Yes, yeah. yes, in like a few years, or it may happen sooner. You guys are speaking knows? a different language right now. I have no idea what's going on. I thought it was, well, I'm learning ahead. it because my girlfriend's such a sports fanatic and this is what happened. So okay. I know nothing about sports. When I go to these watch parties, I think I'm bad luck when I watch games. And by the way, when you said, <laughs> when you said watch party, I think for any other thing in Hollywood, that's not what you're, you, what you're <laughs> a watch party yeah. is my new season of this. Yeah, yeah, this. Yeah. this is a, a game. This is a game. With football? Football, yep. college football. And I'm at the party and I start hearing just kind of this commotion and I see this beautiful girl schooling these guys about sports going, your coach shouldn't shouldn't have uh, made that play on that one game that one time. And ever since you guys hired that one quarterback, like. And that's the sexiest thing. Is Brought when, the receipts. Yeah, is when someone knows a lot about something that you know nothing about, mm -hmm. of, like your right. one subject you're insecure about. And for me, that sports, she was schooling these guys. But delivering it yes. like a pro. Yeah. Something you do know something about. Uh, yeah, d delivering it like a pro, being so confident. And I couldn't take my eyes off her. I kept getting really close to her throughout the party. I was trying to talk to her friend, trying to introduce myself, and it just wasn't happening. And then uh, my best friend was like, buddy, our Uber's here, we have to go. And I'm like, sure. Crap, how, uh, uh. so I just went, I beeline straight, I went right up to her and I did it in the least creepiest way possible. It sounds cringy and creepy looking up and I was like, hey, I just wanna say, um, I think you are such a light, the way you talk to people and the way you interact, I couldn't take my eyes off you. You're so <laughs> beautiful and I just had to say that. That's so sweet. And okay, I, okay, but pause. And she said, oh my God, thank you. Like you're making me blush like that. That's cute. That is very cute. I didn't say my name. I didn't ask for her name. Well, okay, you know. No, 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 but I think I think if someone said that to me without there being, because we were just talking about this, like when you go up to someone and you want to say a compliment, it's so much easier and less pressure when you make it so they don't even have to answer yep. if you don't want to. You give them an so extra like, strategy. You don't have to say your name. You don't have to ask for their name. You don't ask for their number. You don't ask for their Instagram. So like you just like delivering a bomb ass line like that. Like you just like fucking, that was. But she, did, <laughs> she didn't remember it at all. Still to this day, she does not remember meeting me. Granted, I had a lot of drinks. She had a lot of drinks. I understand. And she's beautiful. So she probably gets compliments all the time. But okay, but in your defense, I bet guys come up to her and you're like, oh, you're sexy as fuck. Or like, you know right. what I mean? So it's like- Some guy, yeah. by saying like, you're such a, like I was just more fascinated in like her aura as a person. Yeah, right. And like, that's what I phrased. I wasn't like, yo, nice eyes. Yeah. Like <laughs> The way that your eyebrow just raised when you said that was nice, even just like- <laughs> Yeah, nice eyes. <laughs> Yep, like you're just like, you're already even questioning yourself as you're saying right, it. Right. Um. So yes, that happened. And then I kind of like, kind of like creeped her down though. I was like, okay, so that one girl I was talking to, I remember her name. I didn't even know her name, but I like looked on her Instagram and I found her, knew her name. I don't know if I followed her then, but then a month later, I ran into her again. And I said the same thing. I'm like, Patricia, because she was like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm Matt. Uh, I just still have to say, you are so, Beautiful, you like are such a light. Like security, I, and I be, <laughs> but the way I was saying it though was I was still just like I. You look at you. Like you're you're great. overwhelmed. Yes, and it's it's still so hard to remember the exact things I said. But she was like, "Oh my gosh, thank you!" And I followed her after that. But I still wasn't ready. I was. So, still, but does she remember this time? Now she remembered okay, the okay, second okay, time because okay, okay, then okay, I got okay. her number. Okay, we followed each other on Instagram. Okay. Um, but I was still kind of seeing other people. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready, but every time I would see her on Instagram, I'm like. That girl is such a catch. She is such a good person. 
And then one time I was at the den and I saw her with another guy. Woo! And I was like, oh my God, there's that Patricia girl. And she kissed this guy she was with. And immediately no. my heart sank. I'm like, oh my gosh, she has a boyfriend now. And then I went up to one of her best friends and uh, someone who I met and we kind of mm -hmm. had made mutuals. And I go, hey, is Patricia dating, dating that guy? And she goes, no, she's just on a date with him but they're not like a thing. They're not boyfriend, girlfriend. I'm like, right. oh. Oh, so the, basically the same thing that you were doing with other people. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely wasn't like fair for me to be just like, like hey, <gasps> she's mine. Like yeah. I need her now, even though I'm like talking to other girls. Yeah, but it was, but just, it was like, a wake up call. It kicks you in the ass. Yeah. It's like, yes. wait, hold on. If I don't make my move, this move's gone. Correct. So, so I asked her out for brunch the next day, like with my friends. All and right, she, now hold on. What this is okay, where I lose okay, you. Okay, so Jer I, lose I went on, you here. I went on a breakfast date once, and Jeremy with some with some other dude, and it went re very poorly. Was it just him and uh, you and yes, him? Okay, yes. I brought her with some friends. Like, I think, my friends I think that were makes there. more sense. You know, I would never agree to bring any girl that I remotely was potentially interested in around a bunch of my friends for the first time. But I was like, you have a really fun, happy group of friends. Correct. Yes. You, and and it, wasn't the great time. it wasn't the vlog squad group too. It mm -hmm. was like my oh. manager and his buddies. Okay. And I think another girl was there too, but it wasn't that like threatening, like, hey, come and sit down with me. I, I was just like, Hey, just come hang out. Come, you know, the, yeah. like the Spice Girls said, if you want to be my lover, you got to get with my friends, you know? Friends. So, and we live by that. Yeah, but I'm like, I'll listen, let me let me just set the mood for the Jeremy first 17 was a, dates a, first. a dinner drink date uh, exclusive hoe. We, yeah. Okay. Yeah, every time. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've done that, but it, for her though, she, I knew she still was not interested in me though. Right. She had no clue who I was, not saying you need to know who I am, right. but a lot of the girls, you know, because of the social media mm -hmm. stuff, a lot of girls show interest in you because of who you are. And I love that she had no idea no who I idea. was. Right. And that made me more like, okay, get to know me. So um, I kept asking her out. Uh, the, the first time it went really well, but like, Still, she was not interested. So I asked her out for like a more personal date. <laughs> so this is, what, this is one, two, three, four. Oh, it took, ladies? it took four, oh wait, four ladies. What are you talking no, about? No, I'm saying- Dates, I, dates. Four, four dates at least, but she would always keep saying yes. Right, to right. It. okay. And then, um, because then it was like on a Halloween night though, I like invited her over to David's house with her friends and her friends realized how interested I was in her. And they were like, Patricia, this guy is so great. He's so into you. You should give him a shot. And she was like, uh, uh. okay. And we kissed that night and it was awesome. <laughs> and then I took her out on another date and then she wasn't interested in me. She didn't ask any questions. Oh, that's, that's brutal. Which was a bit of a deal breaker. Yeah, that's brutal. Wait, so at what point in time you were like, what am I doing? Oh, I did that a lot. Okay, got it. I but I knew, say, like, she was, I knew she was just nervous and she okay. still wasn't sure about me. And I think she was just trying to be, cause she had never really been in like a serious relationship at all. Oh, do you think also it's, cause I've obviously never been on like this end of it, but like, is it, do you think from her perspective, intimidating to be like being pursued by someone who has like so many followers and a social following? <sighs> like, I'm thinking if I was on the other end of that, I would be like, oh, is this dude doing this to all the other people? Obviously like, I think that- Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't think she would really actively admit that, but I really did get kind of a vibe of that right. where she thought that to this put a was little, something a little guard I up. do. Also with yeah. that, that entry line, that doesn't sound like something you just have to one person. I know it was, yeah, but that sounds like something like, this is my fucking line. Uh huh. Why, have, I, you, have you used that line I, before? I know, I had never used that line. Well, I know that, but I'm saying it would be easy to believe from her perspective. There was like, oh, this fucker, Correct. this guy led me with some bullshit. I'm not buying it. Yes. I'm not, other girls might buy this. I'm not buying it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. didn't ask any questions. Uh, didn't ask any questions, but, and I still asked her out though. I kept asking her out because I knew I really, I saw her for what she was. And I, she, she was someone who I, I just couldn't get her off my mind because I, in a way, I don't know. I would want to phrase it in a way where it's like, I don't feel like she realized how beautiful she was. And then I felt like if any other guy pursued her and made, um, you know, her, his, not saying it needs to be a possessive thing like that, that he wouldn't see how beautiful that I saw her kind of a thing. That is the literal you know? nicest thing I've Ladies, ever heard in my entire life. if he wants life. to, he, he fucking will. will. Yes, Oh yes, my God. Yeah, so. That is the cutest little love story ever. Yeah, and it's been, it's been so great. Like I, 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 
I just adore her every single day. And I still, to this day, because it was so tough trying to get her to like me uh -huh. <laughs> um, that I can't believe she's my girlfriend. So a yeah, year, nine months if he later. wants to, he would. And yeah, and but and then even if, ew, whoever that he is, trust me, he's around and he will see you for what you are, you know? And that's the best. That's so nice. That's adorable. Anyone who drinks wine knows that the options are limitless, which is why finding a wine I like can be a serious hit or miss experience. I'm pretty picky when it comes to the type <laughs> of wine I drink. <clears throat> I'm, I'm pretty picky. Pretty. Pretty picky. You're very, but I'm a little very, picky. I'm for a not little being like a, picky. you know, a, a wine connoisseur. You sure are I'm a little picky. picky. Mm -hmm. I'm a little picky. I usually stick to the same brand and type, which can get pretty boring, but trying new wines can feel a little risky. Sometimes I end up throwing out the bottle after just one sip. But now that I am a First Leaf Wine Club member, I only get the hits. That's because experts at First Leaf who know my personal palate send wines I love right to my door. And there's always something new to discover. First Leaf is a wine club that curates and ships wines that are perfect for you. Not only does First Leaf introduce you to a ton of new wine, each box gets better. When you rate the wine you receive, First Leaf learns a little bit more about your palate. And because of this rating system, First Leaf is able to update your preferences based on what you've already tried. First Leaf is such a cool club because it delivers wines right to your door. Whenever we get a shipment, it's like a nice little surprise waiting for us. It's like Christmas morning, basically, except for just like more than that, multiple times a year. Sometimes Jeremy and I even have our own little wine tastings with each shipment. It's been a super fun way to discover new and exciting wines. Are we lame for that? I think it's fun. I think it's fun. I think it's fun too. I love, okay, good. I, I love drinking. It's, fun. All right, it's great. Good. It's fun. <laughs> Join today and you'll get six bottles of wine for $29.95 and free shipping. Just go to tryfirstleaf.com slash wild9. That's six bottles of wine for just $29.95 and free shipping at tryfirstleaf.com slash wild9. Lauren, put, your, put down the script. We don't need, we do not need a script for the next sponsor because I've been an actual customer of theirs for years. Put the script, we don't need the script. The script is stupid. I'll tell you exactly how I feel about it. Do you know how much I abuse my luggage? It's a lot, I've seen it, it's I a lot. I abuse it. Luggage is not meant, I mean, listen, I take care of my things, don't get me wrong, but there's something that needs to be, you know, kind of like thrown around and traveled all over the world. It's like a shell. It's a luggage, it's luggage. You know who does luggage really, really well, who can keep up with our lifestyle? Who, Jeremy? Away. So that's why we don't need a script. I already, I already know. Whether, whether you're going to New York, whether you're going to Miami for a little bit of business, a little bit of fun, and you know, you might spill some things on the luggage along the way, or you need to throw it, or maybe you kind of get it into a compartment that's really tight. That's perfect for away. You know why? Because it's stylish and it also works. So whether it's a trip to the corner store, a weekend away, or an extended stay with friends and family, we are all navigating the current reality of travel. But no matter your destination or style, away suitcases, bags, and accessories all come in a variety of colors, sizes, and materials to suit your needs and inspire your future travels. You've also got four 360 degree spinner wheels guaranteed the smoothest roll, even through the most hectic of the airports and stations. And honestly, I'm a clumsy person. I need, I need all four wheels to be performing or else I'm going down with the suitcase. We've all been in there when we were walking in the suitcase and it's like really, really busy, but somehow also kind of quiet. And you, you like the rolls, they don't really work well. And then or you like one's it, not working. Yeah, yeah. You're like, you're like and, then, <laughs> and then it just like you drop it, it falls over and then it's a mess. You're really embarrassed. Anyway, that doesn't happen with the way. Why? Quality products. And I'm not, even, I, I'm literally halfway through and I'm already like, but wait, there's more hundred day trial on everything that away makes hundred days. If you can't figure out if you like something in a hundred days, what are you doing? 100 day free trial, that is huge. Not to mention, Away also offers free shipping and returns. I mean, no no catch. That, that's, yeah, but like, that's so good because like, yes. if you're paying shipping on a big ass thing, like uh -huh. a suitcase, that's like a bajillion dollars. We're not gonna dollars. say big ass because Away, doesn't, Away says you can't say big ass. Away says you can't say big ass. Actually, right, right, no, right, I right. told you, we, we, right. we put we the can say big ass. We yeah. can say big ass can now. Say big ass. Okay, ready? I, I, this is the one thing I'll read just cause I wanted to get it right. Okay. But like, I, I, could, I could do this without it. Hit the us call with to it. action is start your 100 day <laughs> trial. I mean, huge. 100 day trial and That's shop literally so long. the entire away lineup. It's not like they're doing that thing where they're like, oh, we'll get the cheap things out for 100 days. Right, and then, here's the discount. Mm -mm -mm. Here's the discount page from. 100 days. And all you have to do, Lauren, is go to awaytravel.com slash wild. Shop the entire away line of travel essentials, including their best selling suitcases at awaytravel.com slash wild. That's awaytravel.com slash wild. So it's the January third, twenty twenty. Yeah, damn! You yeah. guys did your research. How did we? Did we talk about this? Earlier? No, you made you... a point to say that it was very easy to remember how long we've long been it's together been because it's January third to somebody. And I remember yeah, that. yeah, 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 yeah. That's so now exactly I've got right. your anniversary memorized. Okay, good. And yeah. barely our own. <laughs> Thanks yeah. so much. When is y'all's? November twentieth. 
16th. Sixteenth. Oh, yes, oh, it, but it's also kind of it's also kind of great that it's like January third because you know there's that kind of like post New Year's depression because yeah. you're like oh the holidays are really over there's not it's another like holiday lull. and then you get another one too. That so, is kind of nice. Yeah. yeah. Strategic. Very strategic. <laughs> Definitely. It's a lot of presents all at once. But yeah. Yeah. That, that yeah. is a lot of presents all at once. We've been going really strong. I'm I'm the happiest I've ever been. Um, uh, especially yeah, being with someone. It's really nice. She's a really great. Um, she was, she's a really great teammate and a really good partner. Wow. Teammate. People, true love at its finest. It does exist. It does exist. Even in how Los long, Angeles. How long have y'all been together? Forever three and a year. Three years two months. <laughs> three years and two months. I mean, three years in two months. Oh, I was gonna say, what? The other day we were laying in bed and I think because the pandemic has been so fucking long, I was, I genuinely was having a brain fart. I was like, like we've we'll been together for like, what? Two years two now? Two years or like, three years. Like I, mean, I was a whole year off and I could not remember. Yeah. Let's get up there. I always cringe so much at those TikToks where you see where like the one partner has to remind the other that it's their anniversary. Oh, oh. We're like, is that possibly real? <sighs> like who does that posts that and goes, no, it's fine. I, I know. What, what is like, that? Who goes back to the relationship just normal then? I'd be like, what the fuck? No, you know what though? I, there's this, this girl that I follow who has posted about a prank they pulled on their husband. And, and I know the person, I know that it's real because they were trying to do something despite the husband. And so Healthy. they posted it on on social media. And and I can just, I, I know the person, I know the situation, I know that it was real. And I when I see stuff like that, I'm like, you know what? Maybe a lot of that shit on TikTok that is really fucked up. Like the one that we always refer to is when there was this couple and this girl wanted to be engaged. And so she had a daily counter yeah. where she would flip another day up to add to the day count of how long it had been since dating since not engaged. So like 432 days, no ring, 400 and what, you know what I mean? Oh it just goes my up gosh. And up and up. And so when I see stories like that, I'm like, you know what? Like based on the things that I do know are true, there's a world where this exists. <laughs> I just can't imagine being like, oh no, that's okay. You can just like ring me out in front of the entire internet over some shit like that. I'm not just, it's okay. It was so funny, Mariah, you know, we like have unfiltered and we sit next to each other and she always has her phone out and she has like her widgets and you can make certain widgets yeah, like yeah. Uh, a picture. She had, oh, I wish I had the exact quote. It was like, um, just wait, he will be there. Or it was something where, <laughs> But the thing is, is uh, the way I read it was that she was like waiting for, for Heath, Heath to, to propose, propose yeah. but really it was a Bible quote. <laughs> yep. And it was about Jesus knowing that like, he'll always be he there. Always like, or like it was, and I was like, Mariah, like, what is that? And she goes, it's about God. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> this whole time I'm thinking like- You're, you're hey, counting buddy, down the days. You gotta yeah. figure yeah. this stuff out real quick, dude. Like, <laughs> it's getting bleak. I will say their relationship was one of those ones where like I'm waiting on Instagram. I feel like any day now I'm gonna get to see- well, we should talk about like, it. He'll love that. A fan being like, oh, the engagement post is coming any day now. You know what? I thought it was gonna happen a lot earlier than uh, where it's at now. Really? Yeah, 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 I did. But I really do think it will happen soon. I They are hands down one of the most compatible couples I have ever met. I want, well, down. when Heath walked us through his uh, routine of chopping pillows, because yeah. he knows how happy it makes Mariah. I he was like, pillows. You, you, know you love your, you love huh? your girlfriend. No, wait, you're <laughs> telling me something new about like people I spend all my time with, they yeah. chop pel, what does that mean? I'm yeah. sorry, also, can you pronounce that last word again for me? Oh, wait. Oh, oh okay. no. no. Pillows, well, pillows, yeah. yeah. That's what I said, that's pillows. You said pillows, that was yeah, tough, that I was tough to hear. I, I get that a lot, it, it's pillows. It's pillows, well, yeah, it's, yeah. It's not spelled P. E, e L, Pelos. which is weird because Texas. Okay, like you know the name that starts with a B that ends with like uh, Jamen. Benjamin. How do you say? Well, what's like? How do you abbreviate that name? Ben. ben? Yeah, like Texas people say Ben, like trash Ben. Oh, like Ben. 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 I'm Ben. 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 Then I should be saying Pel. I always I've gotten that since I was like a kid. No, I say pillow. Pelos. Yeah, I grew up with someone who said milk. 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 Just, uh, yeah, that's. Matt, I just want you to know that that's what you did as well too. You okay. replaced the I I'll with the own E. It. So tell me how Heath <laughs> chops pillows. <laughs> Nailed it. Execution was great. So he knows that like decorative pillows look great when they're chopped. So it's essentially like like breaking the structure of it to make it look a specific way that's like been coined as like the way that decorative pillows should look. You know, so, they got like, like oh, lumpy. Like there's like a little bit of like a- Yeah, so they're fluffed and then you chop. Oh uh, yes, yes. And so yes. Heath is like, we, we had this conversation. He was like, I, did, I he never knew why he was doing it, but he was like, Mariah likes all her pillows chopped. So I chop all the pillows because I know how happy it makes her. And we're like, Heath, that is true love. 
off. <laughs> oh, the bar is starting to get a little bit lower here, but yes, I uh, agreed. I, I, he w- went through a marathon and a half just to get a first date. Yeah, I did. yeah, did. that's way different than chopping a few fucking rogue How pillows. Come you don't chop, chop pillows in our house because that's that's a you thing. I actually don't really chop the pillows either. Do y'all have nicknames there. for one another? Yeah, we do. What do you? Yeah, what do you what's yours? Go, you go first. Yeah, I do. Is, we don't. It's Babe, oh, really? and I call her P, but I don't call her Patty. You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. just Patricia Ooh, and Miss P, and, Miss and then P. Hey P. But like in Babe, Miss I don't. P? Ours are really cheesy. That's cute. Okay, like because Heath and Mariah have Bubba, and I think that's so cute. Oh, that's cute. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. <laughs> I don't even know where this came from, but it's Shboob. Shboob. <laughs> What yeah. the heck? Y'all sound like, like like two thousand like eleven Tumblr like, like people like shoob like meep like and, and by whatever. the way we lived that okay. yeah, yeah I was saying was there for that was alive yeah. on MySpace shoob I don't know where it came from well, and also our dog is is schnoog very different than shoob <laughs> listen it was a long pandemic <laughs> okay no but like I could not tell you where the origin of this came from no idea it doesn't really have like a place in our heart outside of the name itself you know what I think it came from I think it came from snoog was first somehow like moose became snoog I'm My, sure one of us like fucked up and said like snoog snoog <laughs> snoog and then somehow it became shboob I don't yeah. know how that the evolution of that happened. My dad calls my mom Snooks. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's really cute. That's cute. Cindy Snooks. Snooks. That's adorable. That's cute. Like, like whenever it's like Valentine's Day or Christmas or stuff, my dad writes Snooks. Aww. Like on. Not the, to be uh, confused color. with Snooky. <laughs> Not, Not at to be all. confused. And that was going on way before uh, Jersey Shore. <laughs> right. Or, so they, or, uh, they get to coin Snooks. Snooks. How many years yeah. have, have they been together? Since 1990. So do the math. 31. 31 years. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And thank you for picking a round number, by the way, yeah. parents. That was, that made <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's really thoughtful of <laughs> them. made it easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Shboob, I don't know where that came from. I'm not sure, but I'm ready to segue. Ready? Yeah. yeah. You're a theater kid. I am. Jeremy's a theater kid. I, I, musical theater. You're a bit of a singer too. I did my research. <laughs> retired. <laughs> Wait, which videos did you watch? Um, One where you were standing around a piano singing some song. Oh, I huh. didn't watch most of it. Oh, okay. I was just like, how, deep, I was like, how cut. well? Yeah. <laughs> Deep cut. I was just like, well, okay, how let's good. how good. Let's okay. get to the note. I don't, I don't even remember what it was, but you were impactful. Thank you. Yeah, uh, really, really left a place. Uh, don't about me. This is about you. Okay. You were a theater kid. <laughs> yes, I was. Not high musical. School, yeah, high school or musical. I did musicals. I did a few, but I would do like. Uh, I wouldn't go for like the big singing role. Okay. I would, like I was Gaston in Beauty and the Bees. That's you could a just, big you, role. You could speak through that. I though. was Bud Frump in How to Succeed in Business without really trying. Yes. Yeah. Lauren, um, I know nothing. I know nothing. Was Lauren bad. is like when you when you messaged me the other day, being like, "How is a Dear Ivan Hansen?" I was like, "I don't know what to tell you because you have different expectations than me." Uh, yeah, I was about to go see Dear Evan Hansen last night by myself without my girlfriend, with Cause, anybody because nobody not. wanted to. Uh, you call me next time. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I. You don't. You're a fucking hater. I'm gonna say yeah. that. I'm not a hater. Yeah. No, no, she's just. I, I'm just. I'm just. I just. I'm not. I'm uneducated. Lauren. I'm uneducated. Every once in a while, I feel like you 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 teeter on hater status. She, do you not have one musical that you love? I love Lion King. Okay. <laughs> I just I have Lion seen. King. Yes, is a musical, <laughs> yeah. a very it, good one, but that's not that's kind of your. I, I, I I haven't seen that many, so it's not like I've seen a lot, and I'm like, oh, I hate all of these. I just haven't been exposed. Have you liked one that you've seen that was not a movie? I haven't seen any. I do, all I've seen is Pitch Perfect. That's once again not, not a musical. A musical. <laughs> It could be. It could be. Oh, yeah. that'd be a great. Oh, give them time. Yeah, it's perfect make on it. Broadway, baby. Yeah. No, she's a hater on that. On that, for sure. For Uneducated, sure. No. underexposed. And are you interested in being exposed? We're not saying uncultured because I think that. <laughs> right. Oh, it's okay. You can call me uncultured because that's totally fine. I'll own that. Our second, <laughs> I'll take that. Our second I will nickname for each other that. is uncultured fuck. Yeah, for sure. You uncultured fuck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. but clearly you're with a the theater person now. So. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. like retired. Like, so. What's the question? Well, the question is, <laughs> well, it's just, as I was doing my research, I feel like when someone says, oh, you're gonna love him. You guys are so much alike. That goes two ways. One, I go, oh, we're so much alike. Or who the fuck said that we're alike? This oh, is yeah, absolutely it bullshit. <laughs> yeah. and, and I hate that when you're ever, you're around someone, they go, you remind me so much of my one friend. And you're like, <gasps> and you're like, like yeah. you remind me of, like, doesn't he remind you of Eric? And you're like, who the fuck? 
fuck is yeah, who fucks it? And then you meet Eric and yeah. he sucks. Yes. And you're like, oh, what the fuck is wrong with you? The best part, the best part about being Asian on social media is that the amount of times that people are like, oh my God, you look so much like this person well, will tag just, you. That's just blind and it's racism. Just Asian girls. <laughs> yeah. It's just Asian girls. You're like black pink, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, really? got it. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. Which is a compliment, but like, nah. It's no. we're just the same race. They think it's a compliment. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Anyway, go ahead, theater buff. I just as I was going through listening to Matt King and who he is and whatever things, the thing that resonated the thing that resonated with me most <laughs> was when you described having different subsects of friends. Right. And the, the amalgamation that is when they all get together and you get to go, is everyone gonna get along? Yes. <laughs> Nobody understands what it's like to have like musically inclined people, speech, whatever, sports, like drunk hat people that are, it's just this like whole Frat rainbow. Bros being a president of a fraternity, right. but paying to go to college with an acapella scholarship, uh -huh. presented some weird social scenarios. Yeah, And I will say nine out of 10 times, I was fucking shocked at my like racist, bigoted frat bro who was in the same room as one of my openly gay, very much the antithesis of everything that I think this dude thinks that he's alike and they became best fucking friends. See, that's the best. Yes, it's the best. And, uh, but you're scared shitless beforehand. Yes, and I think sometimes people don't take charge of, because um, we, we're people pleasers. We love all of our friend groups yes. and we think, oh, that I have to go see this friend group and just this friend group. When you really can be the conductor of your own circus and the host of your own party and bring those people together. 100%. Sometimes you need to take charge in that life. Like, oh, there's nothing happening tonight. Or like, there's that thing going on in those people. Like you can make your own thing. Yeah. And it's really beautiful when you bring those people together. And yeah, we're thespians. We adapt. <laughs> we fall in love with um, anybody. We can break bread with anyone. Yes, you know? that's the whole point. And the, but like your fear of that person's not gonna get along with that person is totally in your head. I, I'm, when I was in college at Kentucky, I literally was like, these are the people that in their heads hate everything about this group of people. And yet I was always shocked when I was like, did I just cure racism right there? <laughs> yeah. Did I just do it? Did is, I just end is, homophobia? Is homophobia over now? But it's just like, I, I would hear the way, and like, it's it's like the just the biases that go in and it's just like, wow, actually when you realize how much you do have in common, you stop worrying about the things that you don't. Mm -hmm. And it was just shocking to see the evolution of my friend groups just like, huh. So everyone can be friends, even when they think that they have nothing in common. And then they start hanging out with you with more that, than they see you. When I'm like, oh, so y'all are cool now. Yeah. Oh, oh. interesting. You, you, get, you brought them together and then you get cut out eventually. Yeah. 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 Have you ever like set a couple up together? Literally. Uh, so my best friend, I have- um, Oh yeah, unsuccessfully so, many times. Well, successfully. So my best friend has dated three guys now within my ex's circle. And so two of them, the first two, also very unsuccessful, um, <laughs> were very much initiated by myself. The third one, still in the ex's friend group, but going really well so far. Okay. And you third didn't, time to try. You didn't introduce that one, I wanna mind like point out. But you're part of the universe and the tangent of it. Like yes. it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for you, but you weren't like so-and-so meet them. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I'm always trying to set people up and it I never works. I love setting people up. Remember really? in Van Wilder, where he takes her on the date on the Zamboni machine? <laughs> And she's like, how, how are we on the Zamboni machine? He's like, well, I introduced the Zamboni guy to his wife. Life's all about making connections. And that's like, I want to like, be like, yes, I brought them together, I but it. it hasn't happened. I love it in, I, I don't really enjoy doing that in, in like relationships. I love that in business, oddly enough. Oh yes, I'm, I mean, I'm yes. doing that all the time. I'm like, hey, you work in that sector of business. They do that thing. Y'all should meet. Love that. Yeah. Relationships, I'm like too much too much responsibility. I don't yeah, know part I, of that. I really, I really fumbled that the first two times. Also, I just feel like I know the, the, <laughs> the, I know the degenerate category of like all my friends. I'm like, and that's where you fall off as an individual who I love, but that doesn't impact me. I just right. get so excited. And I like this person enough to not introduce them to that nightmare until I, I know it's I just get excited up. about the idea that like they, like even like if I don't enjoy like someone's quirks, I'm like, maybe they could fall in love with it. You, but you see the good in people very quickly. Yeah, that that might be my downfall there. But no, no that's, not a good, that's not a downfall. Well, the two unsuccessful relationships could okay, say so, but- Okay, there's trials and relations along <laughs> yeah. the way, yeah. The worst though is when you're trying to set up a friend with another friend and they're like, well, what do they look like? You're like, hold on a second, let me pull up their Instagram. Oh and then you're like, hold on. Like, let me I gotta go picture. through their let photos. Me picture, and you're like, yeah. They haven't posted it forever. Yeah. And then you're showing them they're a the picture of like three years ago. And you're like, <laughs> you well, you gotta see them in person. Picks? They're yeah. really, they're really good looking. It's, it's a personality thing. Yeah, but also like this, are they graduating right now? Yeah, yeah, college. This, this one's actually from high. I'll, I'll keep searching. I'll send you one. You'll love him. He's great. Yeah, he's got a great job. Yeah, yeah. 
I know. <laughs> oh my God. No, yeah, that, that, I would, like, was listening to that. I was like, there are very few people that I feel like who can understand just like what it is to curate, like you were saying, this like, okay, everyone get along. Mm-hmm. You get along, got it. And I feel like people that have like bold personalities have friends that are very much bold and whatever the fuck that they do. And usually for the best, but sometimes you're like, how's this gonna work out? Yeah. But then it does. Yeah, it really does. Let's but. talk about Italy. Also, you were one of the few people that I know had that have also been to Fiji. Yes, yeah, but, I did go to yeah. Fiji. I went there for a brand deal for Love uh, Love Island, the for American Love version. Island, the show? Yeah, me and, Nat, me and Natalie went to uh, Fiji together to promote the show, um, not to be on it, but for like social media purposes. Wait, that's I even mean, that's better though. That's fucking, best yeah. of both yeah. and I remember we were down there and this is before Natalie and Todd were dating and Natalie was newly single, but we were friends. We're in the vlog squad and we yeah. were down there and like, I really like, it was oh, just I was like you we should two? take pictures and stuff together. And Natalie was like, no. <laughs> Cause he didn't want people to think that we were dating. And I'm like, obviously we're not dating Natalie. We're not. We're also I, just making memories. But I'm like, if Zane was down here, you would be totally like, hey, but like for me, cause people like, she would be like, I don't know. I just feel like people would think we were dating mm-hmm. if not we wrong. were down here. Yeah, that, that's yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. So, but also yeah. who flies the other side of the fucking world together to take cute pic- like ba- like vacation pictures that aren't a little bit interesting. <laughs> Only in your scenario. Yeah, that's does that true. Make that's sense? true. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not hopping them up. Like there are very few like of my girlfriends and I'm like. Like if you're both single, Right. And attracted to the opposite sex and you are both of the opposite sex. Yeah. Like we would have either had to like have a pact that we would never hook up or we would have hooked up before but we're not interested anymore. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what did you do in Fiji? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we tell me. took pictures and went on trails and stuff and <gasps> it was fun. And like the whole big brother cast was there too. Oh my God, I, fun. I spent, but Natalie brought her mom. She got to bring a plus one. I didn't get to bring anybody. So I just hung out with like, people from Big Brother there. Oh, that's kind of, I thought yeah. you were gonna say Natalie and her mom, you just hung out with oh, them. Oh yeah, I hung out with them for a bit, but they were like always gone doing their own thing. Yeah. But so yeah, you were alone Fiji, in Fiji? And you went to Fiji you too? We went to Fiji too, yeah. I think Fiji's a little overrated though. <gasps> we actually said underrated. So uh, I've been to Bora Bora as well. And I thought that- <laughs> What a flex. No, no, but I think that <laughs> Fiji- <laughs> oh. Fiji, okay, go on. I, I think that Fiji was one tenth of the price as Bora Bora and I had, an incredible time. Might've been the company as well too, because different relationships at different times. Yeah. But um, I, it was it was beautiful, it was incredible. Everything was so much cheaper. Everyone was friendlier. It, it was very cheap. I think if you live in Australia, go to Fiji. I think yeah. it's weird for an American though to go to Fiji, go to Hawaii. Like there's, I don't know. I think there's other like tropical destinations that mm-hmm. look just as beautiful. Cause like, I don't know, this is me in my own head, the way I saw it. Like, yeah. Australia, Fiji is their tourist destination, but for Americans, I think you can go to like a lot of other cooler places instead of fair, Fiji. It's a pain in the ass to get to. And oh I don't God, like yeah. the, and I, I sometimes, I, I get really weird about being really up close with like poverty when you're in like a luxurious oh, yeah. destination. And like when I was in Fiji though, you would just drive by people's houses and they were just lying oh. on the ground. Oh. I, well, I, no, no, no. I don't know. It was we very were on weird. an island that they would, I, that we found out later on. Cause we were just like, I just like to talk to people when I'm, I'm there. I'm like, hey, like, what's up? Like, how do you like living here? And they were like, oh, it's great. And the resort's wonderful. They're like, they support the island that we live on that everyone gets on a boat and comes to, to work and then gets pushed back to their island away from the people that stay there every day yeah. for like decades. And I was like, that sounds a little sketchy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I know I get you there. That's yeah. or yeah, but I still enjoyed it. Like, I don't know. Have you been to Italy before? Yes, I've been to Italy twice, <laughs> but I've never been to Rome. Okay. And so Ooh. so where have you where have you been before? Um Amalfi Coast. <gasps> I'm dying to the Amalfi Coast. Oh, it's stunning. Never yeah. been. I've been to Italy. I really wish I went there when like TikTok was like popping or right. like, I, like, <laughs> yeah. like when I went there, it wasn't like the coolest spot like to go. To go yeah. And now it's like the number one place to go. Is, so. that, the, is that the TikTok destination? I I, I I think that lately it's been it's it's the most romanticized yeah, yeah, destination. Like the same way that like Santorini had its moment where it was like so- Is Santorini wildly. over? Greece? No, Santorini's not over, but I feel like- It's me. The reputation now of Santorini is that like people have exposed like how touristy oh. a lot of like the moments are. Like, so instead of like, you think of the pristine like white buildings, the blue uh, blue roofs, like they've really publicized like what it actually looks like at sunset, like in those areas. Oh yeah, yeah. it's just filled just with people. Just filled with tourists. It's not that like beautiful- Yeah. Can everybody move so I get my picture? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, right, right, that's right, exactly right. what it is. So um, yeah, I've been to Italy twice, but I've never gone to Rome. And now I'm finally getting the wedding 
going for a wedding. I'm going to three weddings, three weekends in a row. It is, a, we have another, <laughs> we literally, the couple that we just hung out with yesterday, same thing. They've got two weddings in the next three weeks. And we say goodbye to them. Yeah, we <laughs> literally were like, we'll see you in two and a half months. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. I'm like going on tour, but yeah, for, for like <laughs> for weddings, that's how it feels. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, but it's my manager's wedding, and it's crazy because like the wedding was supposed to happen like you know two years ago, two years <laughs> yeah. ago, and for the longest time, I was telling myself it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen, just in case it didn't happen. And the whole time, I was like, it's not going to happen. But now it's finally it's happening. happening. Um, so yeah, I'm going yeah to Ro the wedding is in Tuscany and Volterra. Oh my god! But we're going to Rome, Florence, and then. Um, Tuscany. Have, yeah. you been, oh my God. have you been to Florence? Uh, no, I haven't. Florence, my favorite. Okay. Like, by far. Better than Rome? Yes. Okay. Rome, but Rome is, Rome's tourists. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. you're not like, if you want to go get a, uh, like a, 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 a figurine of the Coliseum, you need to just go, go you know, you one need to go, foot outside um, the Rome. Live your, your Lizzie McGuire movie dreams. There. I really should, but I feel yeah. it, it, during, cause the whole vlog squad was just in Europe and I was having FOMO, but then I realized I'm going to be, gonna be there. You're going to be there. there. That's right. Yeah. But, they, but everyone's just doing the Lizzie McGuire captions and everything. I just can't believe that like the Coliseum, she performs in uh, the end of the Lizzie McGuire uh -huh, movie in the Coliseum. Uh -huh. People don't do that. Like there's not shows that happen inside the Coliseum, right? Matt, I don't want you to tell me that I want to, <laughs> I want to live this dream forever. This is where dreams, this is what dreams are made of. Okay. Yeah, this is what dreams are made of. And I need no one to squash that. And I'm sure that they did that in the Coliseum and didn't get a sound. This soundstage. is what dreams are made of, Jeremy. No, I, I know, I know. I, it's, what they, it's what dreams are made Isabella. of. Isabella, Paolo. Sing to me, Paolo. It's Sing been a Paolo. while since We are Italians. Movie. We do not yeah. a black male. <laughs> <laughs> a, a cultural moment. A cultural moment. Go to Rome. Yeah. Uh, yes, gonna go to Rome and then Florence. Florence and the Disney. Yeah, I, That's so fun. And we have to rent a car, and I'm like so stressed out about running a car. Why are you rent a car? Um, just to get from Florence to the uh, wedding venue because apparently you can't rely on a private. Where this villa is, where the wedding's at, and we got asked to stay at the <gasps> villa. Which I was like, what do you mean so, asked to stay at the villa. Well, because like you know, the villa is like a, a chateau. Only a few amount of people of the wedding party get oh, to so stay you, there. Oh. And your upper I echelon asked. invites. Yeah. So are you in the wedding party? Then? No, I'm not. You're not even in the wedding so party. Like, and you scored an no invite to the villa. Yeah. And the villa? <gasps> that's right. Wow, Damn. that's right. We gotta be friends with Matt King. I know. He obviously. Damn. Yeah. That's you know, exciting. you know, I'm an officiant too, right? Oh really? Yeah, a member. You of want the to do this right now? Yeah. So you would be great for you to do it. But you know what, now I kind of like, I love being an officiant, but now I kind of hate it because then you have as much kind of response. You're as nervous right. as oh, the yeah. bride and groom that day. Can you imagine Wait, fucking so, that up? Hang on, so hang on. So what, I've always heard that it's really easy to- <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's, yeah, so right, what right, do you right, have to do? You can do Walk it us tonight the if you wanted to. Go to universallifechurch.org or .com. <laughs> And just put in your information and get it. And then you can buy like the card and stuff. So I always have the card on me. Do you have case. to take a test or anything? No. You literally just sign up to officiate. I'm really unveiling how Walk easy it is. Walk me through the fee. 25? Uh, to get, there's no fee, but if you want to have the credentials, you got to pay like 30 bucks for like a package. 30 bucks. Yeah. So, so 30, $30. Costs 30 dollars to officiate weddings. Not even, it costs you 30 dollars to have the, the plaque that says you can do it. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I feel like I should just become one just in case, in case like someone's like on their deathbed and they're like, please marry That's us. That's a super fun party trick though. If you always yeah. had your card on you at I every do... party, you could just do it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. What a fun party trick. It really is. And why did you do this? Uh, yeah. Because uh, one of my best friends growing up, it was similar to like a Lizzie McGuire situation. Like Shut up. I was Gordo and she was Lizzie, but we weren't <gasps> like in love with each other, but okay. we were just best childhood friends and she was a girl and uh, she was getting married and she didn't, you know, think I should be included in the bridesmaids. And then his groomsmen were already set. And she goes, you know what? There's nobody perfect who I would want, uh, else also, want to- Also uh, speech winner of all things. I guess, yeah, I yeah. guess so. The yeah. world's all coming together. This is, this is what you were meant to do. I know. <laughs> How much time did you spend coming together with the idea and the presentation for this? Well, I really like to sit down with each couple, get their own- <laughs> stories of how they met and that whole like, do you know, do you, um, you know, promise through sickness and health instead of like those cliche lines you get like, oh, do you promise to take your dog out whenever he's chewing up your bedpost or something right. like they find some little inside joke and uh, alternate that with one another, make it personal and true and I fun. I love how serious you take this though. What a, I, I respect that. Thank you, thank you. I, King I, I, wedding I, aficionado. But I'm not that like, you know. Oh. If there was a couple that was like very religious, I think like, of course you should 
see so, have, a, ha, have a, someone who's a, a little bit person. more yeah closer with not just a higher being with than just their, me. <laughs> but Matt, I just want you to know that you are the perfect fit for us. What if there was like a, a tap in? And tap we will be hiring you at Can some you point. Hey. You had like the priest or the pastor for like the first half, and then yeah. like, hey, you're in. Now that we got that out of the party, way, party, party is starting. The worst is when I go to weddings, I'm always going up to the officiant who's who's like usually like <laughs> a pastor of some huge church. I'm like, hey, hey, look at me. I'm also an ordained minister, dude. And they're like, very nice, it's, very cool. And they have like the whole Bible and stuff like it, with peace them. Peace be with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? They're like, we are one of the same. So, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, cool. Game shows and children's books. Game show, game shows and children's books. Oh, you really know my life plan and what I want to do. I need to hear it because if, if these are two things that you want to I know about hit, children's books. I didn't know about game shows. You must yeah, be the host of a game I, show. I, I, you already would, have an idea. I would love to be the host of a game show. We like I to really manifest would. things here. Um, yeah, no, but then I don't know how much I want to say about this no, game No, no, don't show. give it away. Don't give it away. Don't give your format away for free. Okay, but, okay, but pause. I, I heard about the format on a podcast. It's already out there. Oh, it is? Yeah, <laughs> no, I would like to, well, then I want to be a little vague about it because this is a whole different audience than yours. Yeah. Than mine. Yeah. So okay. in the comments below, tell us if you think Matt would be good at what he's about to say. I like a game show where you, um, in uh, intelligence and stuff you know is um, important and people who walk away, you learn something too at the same yeah. time. You know what I mean? Like okay. I don't want like a, a, a deal or no deal type situation right. where it's like, oh, you just have to pick between these two things and chance is involved. Um, yeah, I really want something similar to like, are you smarter than a fifth grader? Yeah. I want to do that. That's one of my things I want to get into for like my thirties. Are then you smarter my, than an ex-viner? Uh, am I smarter than an ex-viner? Yeah, oh, perfect. so we're gonna make this about Vine and we're gonna make it this about the, how Vine ended, <laughs> sure, um, sure. Are you smarter than an ex, um, uh, yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then that, and then children's books. Uh, yeah, I love, and you know, it's always interesting thinking about your audiences. You know, your audiences are gonna grow with you as we. So we just dropped a Wild Till Nine blanket and the amount of photos that we have that are obviously like people that are our age that are, you know, also use blankets because like blankets, whatever. Right. Right. But we also have this this new subsect of people who are sending us photos of their babies in wrapped blankets. In, yeah, <laughs> children wrapped in yeah. blankets. And we're like, oh my God, we're old. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah, we're, uh, yeah, but like we always, the, the my favorite comments are the ones that are like, I'm grading papers for my third grade class listening to your podcast. And it's like us sitting here talking about whatever crude thing that is we're talking about, but it's just like real life shit mm -hmm. as they're grading the the youths of America. Yes, someone recently uh, was in class and they got in uh, uh, like an example problem of another teacher. Cause you know, teachers share oh, oh, yeah. and they do, they work do, they, plans yes, and yes, they yes, write yes, yes. problems. It was Matt and Zane. Like they had used me and Zane in a problem. And, the, the teacher who got it knew that the other teacher that had made this is clearly a listener of Unfiltered. Like right. it was too on point of what <laughs> they were writing. And yeah. it wasn't just some automated thing where you choose Matt and Zane in the way Zane is spelled. It was- <laughs> Right, right, right. It was very obvious. And so this teacher had like shared it and goes, I think whatever other teacher made this lesson plan <laughs> is a fan of your podcast. Is an Unfiltered listener. Yeah. That's amazing. I feel like in case studies all the time, but like school yes. teacher ones, they'll be like, this YouTuber da 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 has done this. Like how much merch are they gonna sell? Like it's just so funny how things have shifted in the textbook examples. Yeah. But That's also cool. if you were a teacher, you would have to pull from your own life. And if oh, you're I a teacher mean, getting started yeah. in your lesson plan, you're gonna be writing things about what you know. Okay. It's just full circle yeah. and it just seems so weird, but it's like, that's the real world. So that's why I wanna do children's books. I, I hope to one day. I, mean, I, I just to. see myself do it. You know, just make the next I, chicka chicka boom I boom. Fucking, you know? <laughs> if anyone's gonna be able to create that type of story, it's your mind. Thank you. you I hope so. I don't know if I even, if I would want it to be a series or just one singular book, you know? What's your, what's your favorite kid's book? Um, oh, that's a really good question. Um, oh, that's really, a hard question. Oh, um, my, uh, fa the, one of my favorites is actually the Panda Palace. Not a lot of people know it. Haven't a heard deep of the Panda cut. Palace. Do you know about it? No, no, no. I haven't heard of the oh, Panda Palace. Plug the, the Panda Palace. The Panda Palace is a book that's about, um, it's this restaurant this panda owns. And then he has to, the, these different groups come to stay at the Panda Palace, which is a restaurant. Okay. So it's like, it's almost similar to like the, 25 days of Christmas where it's like, oh, the oh, partridge yeah. and pear tree, two yeah. doves. And it's like this, I don't know, this uh, multiplying Eclectic thing of like mix, five yeah. monkeys come in and they sit there. And I always just love the uh, the illustrations and stuff. Okay, but, so, but if you want to create children's <laughs> books, there has to be a reason you pick that demographic as opposed to everything else, right? So like, what is it that draws you to being able to create stories for kids? Cause I, there's, I, 
what draws me to it is uh, there's nothing better than I think those moments when you were like a kid sitting with your parents and it's like the quiet time where like you're not looking at a screen, you're sitting down with a book and you're hearing just the vibrations of your parents' chest coming out of, you know, from their body and you feel so safe and that's kind of rocking you to sleep at the same time. I hope kids are still experiencing that. I hope so too. It's probably just iPads and there's just interactive videos and noises and sounds. Um, but I like that. I really do. And it's something that I, those are the memories that I really cherished, cherished as a child. And I want to pass that on to other households and families. So my mom's biggest thing is like, if you are getting a gift for like someone who has kids, she's always just like, get a really nice, beautiful book, get a nice, beautiful book. Oh yeah. Um, my favorite kid's book is if you give a mouse a cookie. That's a good one. Classic. 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 I was that for Halloween one year. <gasps> yeah. Really? What did you wear? Um, I wore like, overalls and like yeah. mouse ears and like a cookie. And a cookie? Yes. <gasps> oh, I'll never forget that when I took up that picture that night though, I like had a beer, but I was sitting down and the beer went on my crotch. And then I took a picture with like these girls and there was just, it, just it looked like I pissed pee. myself. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. And I remember having to message that girl on Facebook, like, can you please delete that yeah. photo? <laughs> on Facebook. Do you, I've already untagged myself, but, but can like- can you please remove that from your Facebook album? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. That's adorable. What's your favorite children's book? He's canceled. Oh. Is that the name of the book? He's canceled. No, it's Dr. Oh. Seuss. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Dr. Seuss. Oh, oh yeah. he is canceled. He is canceled. Yeah. Which one was oh. it though? I mean, a green eggs and ham sticks out. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever read a fish out of water? It yes. wasn't a Dr. Seuss book, but it was like a Dr. Seuss collection. I like it was maybe like a cosign of, of, yes. of Mr. Like Seuss. Dr. Yeah. Seuss owned it. Yeah. But yeah, that's actually probably my second favorite is a fish out my of water. My other one is uh, Maisie and the purple and her purple plastic purse. I remember this one. Really? Yeah, because the alliteration. Yeah, Maisie and her purple plastic, pl fucking purple nope. plastic, plastic purse. purse. Purple plastic purse. I like the purple crayon. Purple crayon. The one with like the kid in the purple crayon and he draws like different stuff. It was like a square. A deep cut. Deep cut. Oh, man. Deep cut. <laughs> That's, people in the comments will know. <laughs> yeah. they, isn't it funny? Like you get enough people together and it's like someone that- Someone's that, gonna that know. Meant, someone's I gonna know. I have the same book in my, like it, it'll be in someone's office somewhere as an adult for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, th th to me, it's just like, anytime you hear someone wants to be like a game show host and like tell, children's narratives because you want it to reflect the nostalgia that you remember as a child. I'm like, great. I can't wait to watch that journey. That's it's, so cute. Oh. I hope we're on your PR list to get your kids back. Yes, certainly. For, yeah, our, yeah, well, for our dog child. Come to the sign. For our dog child. Know? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll read it to Moose as he listens to our heartbeats. I. How many kids do you guys want? Just one? One. Two. Two. We were both only, only children. Yeah, I, I could be fine with one. Would you adopt? No. No. And I know that sounds so incredibly like, why not? But my family comes from a long lineage of not having like the, the normal, as far as I'm concerned, the thing that I didn't have. And like, it's like a goal of mine to achieve the thing that I've never experienced. Okay. Like his adopt, the mom that adopted him is also adopted. Oh. Right. So it's like adopted okay. and adopted. And it's just like a long line of it. I'm like, can we just get like, one, one blood child for some family history, one rung of it. some some health history. Like I met, yeah, my, yeah. I met my birth father after, a, like for the ninetieth time in a row. Like I got assigned the the thing in English class where it's like go to your mom and dad and get a story of when they were whatever. And I was like, I don't have a dad again. Once and I was like, you know, fuck it, I'm gonna go find this guy. And that's how I met my birth father. Oh, you did meet him? Y yeah, you know, I met him both. Yeah, yeah, oh. fine. But like, it were was, we all together during this time? No. We went for dinner with his birth dad not too long ago. Oh. Yeah. Does and that's, he have kids? Sorry, I'm asking, I'm no, interviewing no, no, no. you yeah, guys. No, I get you. This have you all talk, do you all talk about this? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think it's important that more people, like and it's, for some people it's uncomfortable, but like for me, it's not uncomfortable, which I think it's like, you need to normalize talking about the fact that like, you know, your parents also are kids at some point. Do you they, wish him a happy birthday? Like how close is the relationship I don't now? I know what his birthday is, but oh. at any point in time, we talk and it's my birthday. I'll ask him how old he is and then I'll make fun of him for being old as fuck. I uh, wish him happy birthday on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Does yeah, like, he have kids? Uh, 47 now? of them. Whoa. I'm kidding. Oh. No, like like 11, nine, eight, seven, so, six. So he's, he's married now with two kids with that wife. Both, and so- Yeah, both of my birth parents had a lot of children after me. I was the first. Oh. Yeah, but like separately. Just wasn't the right Well, time. I think she was 16. He was 17. Oh, uh, okay. Little yeah, ripe. just, yeah. 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 We, like kids. That's why like, I can't be mad at them. I did dumb shit at 16 and 17. I just didn't have a kid, but so I the, could have. The half siblings that we, that 
we met, though, it's so fucking weird. It's so in weird. In the best of ways. Oh, in the best of ways. Like the kid These who kids was, are- was maybe 13, like he is a kid of like the internet, right? Like he's growing up like watching YouTubers and gamers and stuff like that. And so, you know, at this like kind of uncomfortable setting of like them meeting their half brother and like having to kind of process what that means for their family dynamic. Cause they didn't know about me before. Right. Like, because they were like maybe like, Eight and maybe eight and twelve ish. Like nine and eleven. Maybe nine. Okay. And they ex- and your dad ex- or your biological dad explained it to that day. them. Yeah. That day. That day. Meeting you, like. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. And well, typical, I, I was like, oh yeah, now I know where you're from. Procrastination. <laughs> One of my best friends in high school got a message from another kid on Facebook, and he said, "Hey, um, I just wanted to let you know that your dad um, is my dad," and. What's crazy is they were like close to the same age. So oh. basically his dad had an affair right. with another family and had kept it a secret up until he was like six or 17. Oh, and shit. he found out that he had this whole other brother that his dad had been providing for. His <gasps> mom knew the entire time, but apparently they got in some argument, which is why the kid reached out to his son right. to right. let him know to kind of disrupt it and finally oh, shit. shed some light on Teenagers. it. Teenagers. Well, I feel like ancestry DNA, like in the 23 Ooh. and me, like all oh, that's really fucking with all the family oh, trees now. Yes, my uncle got reached out to by some woman who apparently was his cousin because yeah. his uncle, um, was like kind of a longshoreman and would go to these sea towns and would hook up with people and had uh, All these, this like, relation random, to this woman. Yeah. And this woman has been reaching out, trying to find family. And my uncle was kind of like, nice yeah. to meet you, but this, no, I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. Like, also, can you imagine a world before social media and cell phones and everything? Like if you hooked up with somebody and then you left town the next day, how would you find that? I feel like our grandparents were like, yeah, like I'm going to the grave with that shit. And then 23 and me is like, our answer Dina is like, And by the grave, we mean, <laughs> we're just making all the connections. All the connections. Suggested friends to yeah. some yeah, Facebook. Your DNA just- matches 50% of someone else's. You're like, Weird. I literally just got an email from Answer to DNA and they were like, you have a new third cousin match over in the in um, uh, Ukraine. And I was like, okay. Damn it, I gotta do this. You don't have it yet? No, I haven't. Cause I bought it for, I think both of my parents just for, you know, fun. Mm-hmm. Cause, but I thought, thought, oh, since they've done it, then it solves Matt, me. you can be adopted too. <laughs> <laughs> I know, maybe I should just for my oh, own. You have to, oh, absolutely. Well, since- there's like, it's interesting to see, like, obviously like I know my remote family, but it's like up, the family tree and then back down on other like limbs of it are yeah. the people that like I'm randomly getting connected with. Oh, yeah. wow. it's, cool. it's, not, it's not anyone that I've reached out to like over Facebook or Instagram or anything, but it's always just like, oh shit. My family's Face- bigger than like six people. Facebook would be the medium for that. Hey, hey. Carol. Yeah, 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 exactly. But like to cap off the last point, it was shocking to see these kids who I had never met personally or physically ever. and the characteristics that were- Oh, my oh so yeah, so what I was gonna say is that this like 11, 12 year old kid, kid of the internet turns to me at some point in dinner and he was like, Lauren, has your channel been affected at all by the monetization changes of um, <laughs> of the YouTube ad changes? And I was like, bitch, what the fuck did you say to me? You're 11. And he's just like a big gaming fan. And what was it? Ad- adpocalypse. And he used the word adpocalypse, this 11 year old kid. And I was like, I was like, I'm talking to little Jeremy right now. I was like, this is disgusting. <laughs> this is so fucking weird. Right, I'm just like, and I'm YouTube certified and get paid to do that. So just keep doing that a little bit longer. There will be a job for you, You're kid. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Very good. But it's just like the things that I, and I've always been drawn, like I've always been like selfishly curious of how tech works. Like mm-hmm. I'm not a coder, but I've always worked in tech because I'm interested in like how new shit works. That obviously is nature to yeah. some capacity. And it's just interesting to see it. Are you an only child? Uh, no, I have another brother. And are you similar? Uh, yes. Yeah. Very similar. Older, younger? Uh, younger. He just moved to LA too. Wow. I know his girlfriend got into UC, his girlfriend got a full ride to UCLA grad school. Wow. Which is great. Difficult to do. Difficult to do. She's brilliant. She even got a full ride to Harvard too. Wow. Just want to add that on. She's just, but UCLA will like pay you as well to be a grad student. Right. She was like, but Harvard was like, we're not going to pay you to be at Harvard. Nobody gets paid to go to Harvard. Yeah. 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 So just come for free. So they, uh, in UCLA was a better school, but now it's like crazy. My brother's so close to me now. So how old is he? Uh, he, if I'm 29, he's 27. God. Cute. Yeah, Ooh. he's oh great. God. That'll be fun. I love him. Yeah, he's like one of my good friends. We're very, very similar. He's smarter than me. He's better sp- well-spoken and Do stuff. Do you let him he's, know that? Uh, yeah, I mean, he, wait, I don't let him know that. He knows that. Yeah, but like- <laughs> That's even worse. Just because yeah. you know that when you have to admit worse. it. Yeah, no, uh, we, we're, we're 
very similar, but very different in the same way. Got I it. love him to death though. He's the best. That's cool. You're in the same city despite yeah. being, you know, leaving the other side of the country. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we need to see each other more though, but he's, he still hasn't got all of his furniture situated. So he's right. like, you can come over, but we can just sit on a, on the floor, on a chair. On yeah. the lawn chair, eat pizza. And like, you yeah. can come yeah. over. We're yeah. not doing that. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I, I I want to have a big family. It depends on how much money I had. You know, if I had a yeah, lot yeah. of money, so I'm six. A successful <laughs> adopt <laughs> two. Like, so successful what, what does Patricia think? What does Patricia? Yeah, think? Well, she's uh, from Alabama. I'm sure there's kids in there. A, uh, Patricia came from. Uh, she's the middle of two brothers. So okay, three. I'm pretty comfortable with. But Medium. Like, yeah, but then have, again, I don't want my kids to be like roommates. You know, like you want like some intimacy. You don't want to have too big of a house. That seems like a and lot. Then they're all going to different schools and stuff. You just that want, seems like a full time job. Like, yeah. I can't even imagine. Like I always say that I don't want to be outnumbered. So even like one kid, one dog. That's a two to two situation. <laughs> I want twins. I want twins. I promise you that Patricia and her body does not want twins. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that's like a compliment. But at the same time, I'm like, well, let's. Let's and Matt's see. Like, Let's try it out. Do you have twins in your grandparents' genes? Because oh, that's kind of where it comes ooh, from. Not my grandparents, but I do have like my mom's cousins. Mm. Have it twins. usually comes from someone's grandparents. I forget exactly where it comes from. I, I only know this because my mom's dad was a twin, but it's the he's fraternal, not identical. And I think it's only identical. We're one. not doing twins. My body would literally say no to that. No, but we're not doing twins. That's too much. Although the content would be very. Very good. Yeah. They're very cute. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Even if you blurred their faces out, it'd be very cute. <laughs> Think about the DIY like double crafts. It was a boy and a girl. Would they be like, competitive <sighs> about their Instagram accounts? Like people prefer one twin over the other. You know what? I see twins who are in social media both at the same time and it always, it ends terribly. And also uh, between yeah. us who are both wildly competitive, you know how that would end. Yeah, it's not good. It's, it's not, not good. good. So one kid and a dog it is. I, I would I would be fine with that. Do y'all know those twins? Do you guys like know twins though who like live their lives together? It's weird. Yes. Like they wear the same thing. They're yeah. still roommates. Yes. They attend all the yes. same classes. Very s interesting. Well, I mean, see, that's what I mean. I think that it's like a, like the 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 leaning on each other is so much. Yeah. I, I had three sets of twins in my grade. Whoa. Wow. In a class of only like 200, 250 kids, we had three that's sets of twins. Statistical anomaly. Yeah, right? Yeah. And, and two of them were Smith twins. So two sets were Smith the twins. Smiths? Yeah. Well, very common name. I was gonna common say, actually, name. that's not that. But that to, to have two sets of twins and then for them to also both be named Smiths. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty wild. But of, of any last name, they're gonna be the same, like that and Johnson, yeah, probably. Johnson, right. yeah, 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 you're right. This is gonna be fun. We gotta hang out more. We got a double date, I was guys. Gonna say, we got a double date. She needs, Let's do she it. She needs to hang out with more Southern <laughs> energy. Yeah. She does. What do I need to, what do I need to take from the Southern energy? What do I need to absorb? Um, I just, just, it's just the, getting the, rid of what the, the, the do thing. <laughs> Did you see almost orangutan? <laughs> I, like, I don't know, it was like the orangutan. Those orangutans up in Canada. I will bring Smarties, the chocolate kind to Please our next hangout. Please do. Please do. And she'll talk about things like um, uh, War Eagle or Roll Tide. War or Damn else. Eagle. War Damn know, Eagle. I don't know No Roll Tide? Saying. No Roll Tide. Okay, got it. Other side of Alabama. Got yeah. it. Yeah. War yeah. Damn Eagle. Yeah. Auburn. I don't know what you're saying. That's what it's going to be all about. Yeah. It'll be fun. Extra real things that I What are you back from about? Italy? Uh, well, I won't be back until the 18th because right after Italy, I have to go to my best friend's wedding. And then right after that, oh, yeah. it's wedding, another friend's wedding. It's so, and I'm going to stay in Dallas. So 18th. But I I'm looking forward to it though. So we just see you in November. Like, just a big clinch. Yeah, we'll see you in November. And then you guys are gonna go Thanksgiving. So Matt King, oh. supermodel, also has a podcast. Also has yes. a YouTube channel. Hoot and a half on uh, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube the as well. The link will then, be below. And Zane and Heath unfiltered as well. You can also book me on Cameo too, if you've already liked Ooh. what you've seen from me so far. Wait, what's the weirdest thing you've done on Cameo? Ooh, um, the weirdest thing I've ever done on Cameo, it was, and it was before me, <laughs> I didn't realize it was a foot fetish thing, but somebody asked me <laughs> to like show my feet and talk about my foot. Oh and my, then, how did you not realize that? And like, walk me through how that yeah, didn't Because did like, it was at the beginning of Cameo. My friend, you know, Devin uh, Townsend, Devin Spindler started Cameo. And I was like one of the first people on the app. And so what a flex. I was just like, hey, whatever, like uh, my foot. And then <laughs> yeah, he reached out, he goes, did you get a weird like foot request thing? Cause apparently a lot of people were getting it and you got one and you did it. And I was like, oh, it was a fetish thing. <laughs> You're like, I'm a day one only fans but then, on Cameo. You know what we need to do to, to close this podcast then? 
Check out the WikiFeed Wiki score. score. That's what we'll look at. I'm not on WikiFeed. I There's, bet you, you are. You absolutely are on WikiFeed. Uh, what is this? Guaranteed. Okay, what is the, no, and I this don't is think why, I am. I'm not on go. Wikipedia. You're on Wikipedia, Lauren. Am I? Did you Wikipedia me? Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> <It's an update. laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. What is the Wiki? What is the WikiFeed You're about to scale. You're about to find out. Okay. You're about to find You're out. You're gonna tell me my score before you tell me the scale? No, no, no. And by the way, we're gonna end with this. So what else do you need to stop? What else stop? Don't say it. We're gonna, that'll be, that'll be, the, that'll be the last word. Oh no. That'll be the last oh, wait. word. No, wait, wait, is he no, 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 no. Is he... You have a podcast? What else do we have a plug in? Uh, we're, we're, on this. We're, we're gonna end on this and then that's it. What I, uh, yeah, no, I have my podcast. Do you, do you have, do you have Hoot and Half merch? Um, no, not right now. You should, but that's, we will. Sweater, that sweater's really cute. That's in the, that one picture. Thank the you. The gray one with the red. Wow. I gotta send you guys some. It's a great sweater. Yes. We'll kick it up for the holiday season. I'll make yes. Mike do it. Yes. Maybe you have some new colors and designs. So get ready guys. What is my wiki? Matt, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. And it's been a pleasure talking to you guys. This is so great. I felt like I've, I've known you guys for like years. I feel like and the, I feel the same, but I feel like this, for... might, this might ruin it. Wiki feet score, 4.7. Oh, that's what? great. Out of what? Five. Oh, that's great. That's great. This has yeah. been wild till nine. Show See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Show me this.